guys. Hey, hey, hey oh, we did it. Sam, oh, we Sam. got it. <laughs> right. So I'm going to start recording as well. Perfect. Record on this computer. Boy, what people, you, you had any idea what we just went through to get to this recording? Yeah. She didn't say recording in process on mine. Oh, you didn't hear it? No. Did you hear it? I heard it for me, but I didn't hear you record. It says it's recording. recording. It says it's recording. So okay, I'll yeah, I got a, I got recording up in my left hand side. And if you do, we're yeah. good. Okay. Mine says recording as well. Okay. okay. And I think I, I think we're good. By the way, CERN is in Switzerland. It is in Switzerland. Okay. Yeah, so you did right. good. Uh, if I don't know where it is, that would look <laughs> <laughs> Switzerland. Awesome. Um, before we get started. I'm going to yep. just inter, or, uh, not interview, inter, introduce you to my people. Oh, cool. yes, yes, um, yes. So, yes. ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. This is not the typical format. You've seen this before on some of my, uh, or my Boys Town interview, um, where I talked to a previous employee and uh, student of Boys Town in Omaha, which has a lot of dark history to that. So, that format is basically what this format is, and who we are with tonight is Tommy, Mr. Thomas, all the way from across the pond from the UK. We're exactly in the UK. So I'm from Essex, which is right near London, but now I live in Dorset, which is about two hours from London. So I'm still a London boy, really. Yeah, but, uh... listen to that accent. My goodness. <laughs> He's definitely not from Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a bit of a sore throat as well at the moment, so that... Dang. Like, <laughs> that sickness is getting everybody right now, man. Oh, mate, I've had, I've had the flu, then I had a sick bug, and now I've got a bit of a cold. In the space of three weeks, it's been. Oh fun. my gosh, man! It I is know. getting everybody. Everyone's ill. I don't know what it's yeah. like over there, but everyone's ill around here it's at the moment. Same thing, man. My bo both my parents are still getting over being sick. My brother and his wife are still recovering. Thank God, my wife and I, we've been taking like ample amounts of vitamin C and zinc and everything else you can think um, yep. just to try to keep, keep that out of our system. Yeah. Um, we're, we're doing good, but you know, we're, we're not taking yeah. down the defenses yet because <laughs> we got a week until Christmas and there's a lot to be done between now and yeah. then. And we want to yeah, make sure that we're healthy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, Tommy does a, an amazing podcast. Um, go ahead and tell us a little bit about that so that these, everyone listening to our crazy awesome. conversation understands what we're doing tonight. Cool, man. So the podcast is called Let's Get Freaky, and we talk all things paranormal, ghosts, cryptids, UFOs, anything. If it's paranormal, we'll talk about it, um, even conspiracies a little bit, um, everything, because I think conspiracies and paranormal is linked. Yes. I think you can't have one without the other, really, sometimes. Yeah, um, absolutely. So everything, everything paranormal, I love. I love talking about it. I love hearing people's encounters. I get different guests on every week to talk about their work or encounters that they've had with the paranormal. Yeah. And yeah, I'm meeting some interesting people like yourself, man. Yeah. And it's really cool because as I started, it's on me. And as it's on me has grown over these last four years, which is crazy. I'm four years into this. Um, I, I recognize Tommy's name every time he'd like an Instagram post or whatever, but like we never connected like one-on-one. -on -one. And then, um, gosh, was it October? No, gosh, it was earlier than that, September. Yeah, some, yeah, yeah. I think it was September. September time. Um, yeah, I was, I was a fanboy. Yeah. What's that? What's that? I was a fanboy. Yeah, a bit of a fanboy. Stuff. Yeah, <laughs> and he's, he, he'd been following um, our Mind and Cess documentaries, Haunted Iowa, Squatch Iowa, um, CCPI. Yep. He's familiar with all of that stuff. Um, awesome stuff. Basically everything that's over on our second channel, CCPI TV. Um, and immediately he, he sent a message and I get a lot of messages on Instagram for a lot of different people. And I was just imagining like, okay, it's just another person telling me that they burped really long today or, <laughs> you know, asking for a, an audio clip of me burping specifically for them, you know, something like that. Um, and it's like, Hey man, I want to have you on a podcast and we want to talk about paranormal. And like, I don't, I don't ghost on anymore. I still, I still go after Bigfoot and things like that, but one thing about it is I've always wanted to maintain the relevancy of it in my brain because it's such an educational topic. Yeah. And I've had so many crazy encounters that I think it's extremely important to share those with people. Even if I'm not dabbling in it myself, 
to give people an idea of like what they can expect, you know, depending on how deep into their stuff they get. And so it's been really cool getting to know Tommy more, more deeply over these last couple of months. We're both Minnesota Vikings fans. Yeah. If you're not a Vikings baby. fan, yeah, keep your comments out of the comment section. We don't <laughs> need to hear it. Okay. Yeah. Everyone yeah. thinks that we're, uh, well, everyone thinks the Vikings are fake and uh, not They're worthy wrong. of anything. <laughs> Yeah, but we just had the biggest NFL comeback in history, 39 points in the second half alone, well, plus overtime, uh, but 36 points in the in the second half of the game. And then Unbelievable. Win. Yeah, you want to and, talk paranormal, that's paranormal. <laughs> holy crap, you want to talk aging 20 years, that's what happens. Yeah. And like yeah. calling the doctor, being like, listen, I need some heart medication because I can't do yeah. this. That was um, unreal. But yeah, so basically, now that we got the intro out of the way, you kind of get an idea who Tommy is. Tommy's a great guy. He has a great family. Uh, Tommy, go ahead and plug your other um, social media ventures, your other creative ventures that you're taking care of, too. Yes, I've also recently started with YouTube. I've still got a long way to go to catch up with you, sir, but <laughs> I've, uh, I've started the Cullum Crew, which is basically a family YouTube channel. It's family friendly. It's just our days out and... Um, yeah, just silly stuff, really. But we're going to be doing a lot more uh, in the next year. And uh, it's something that I've always wanted to do. And I enjoy doing it. And the kids enjoy yeah. doing it as well. So, yeah. yeah, and I can speak to that because I've watched his content and it's it's so different. And again, I'm not I haven't searched YouTube for family vlogs and things like that. It's just never been something I've looked for. Um, so Tommy was actually my first exposure to that kind of content. And mine can kind of border on that. Um, but again, you're getting a different creator. So you're getting a different style. You're getting a different perspective. You're in a completely different part of the world than I am. So you're getting different landscapes and interactions and things like that. And it's the content is fantastic because oh, for me, what it's been is I've had a long day. I'm looking to wind down at night. Uh, my wife has gone to sleep to get ready for work and I, I'm just not quite sure what I want to do. And I don't want to dive into something to get me riled up. I don't want to play a video game. And I've literally turned on the column crew and just to watch the family dynamic that you guys have. And as a creative person to see the passion that your kids have when your camera comes on and your wife has, that is very rare, at least in my world, it's very Thank rare you. You very to much. have that much passion around you. And so you are already creating something very special. And so I want you to know that from a, a creatively you. deep person, um, and I've said that to you ever since we really started to get to know each other, that I, I see yeah. a lot of potential in you. And I Thank think that, that uh, 2023 could be a big year for you guys. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how you, you know, broaden your horizons and expand that territory of family vlogs. And uh, because I think you do have something special there. So I'm excited to watch that grow. Thank you very much, brother. That really does mean a lot. Thank you very much, man. Yeah, we absolutely. love it. We love doing it. That's the main thing. We enjoy doing it. Yeah. And um yeah, we're having fun doing it. <laughs> yeah, see that thing. that's the main element right there, man, is as long as you're enjoying what you're doing, it's yeah. not work. It's not. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Like this man, he just got home from work. And how long did you work tonight? So I worked for six hours tonight. So not okay. too bad. But still, I didn't work for six hours tonight. <laughs> and he, he got that's home my real question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he got home from this six hour long shift and it was a crazy night for him. And I was like, yo, man, like take some time and just collect yourself and, you know, come down from work a little bit. And he's like, no, 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 let's get on. Let's talk. And like, yeah, this man is passionate. And so I just I wanted to, to take this time to just shed a little bit of light on him. And that's why I wanted to have him on my channel. And this is going to be a collab video This is going to be on his podcast. So yep. once I'm done jabbing on here, we're going to switch it over to him and he's going to take the reins. And interview me and I'll share some different stories and things like that and kind of give you guys an opportunity to get to know me even deeper and more intimately in regards to some of the crazier ideas and perspectives that I have. So awesome. I guess I'll go ahead and wrap my end up and turn it over to Mr. Tomas. Thank you. But firstly, thank you very much for your kind words. Sir. That really does mean a lot. Coming from someone like you as well that I've watched for many years, admired your work for many years. So 
Thank you very much, man. That means yeah, a lot. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I have I have messy hair <laughs> here, but hats off to you, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> and I brought a can today. I could maybe try a burp later. I was thinking. Hey, let's go. Yeah. All I got, I got hot coffee in my Christmas mug. That's all no, I got in water. Cool. That is a but cool hey, mug. If you, if you try it, I'll give it a go. <laughs> let's go. I don't I don't think I've ever burped off of coffee, if I'm being honest. Man, I I'm not good at this. <laughs> Man, you make it look easy. <laughs> oh, no, it's not happening. Let wow. it grow, bro. Let it grow. I think it would be sick. <laughs> it's not happening, man. You make it look easy, brother. I thought, oh, come on, I'll do a big burp. You'll be like, yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's embarrassing. <laughs> it's not, though. It's not. It's your first time. It's first burp. Yeah. It's your yeah. first time. I remember when I had my dad on my, uh, my burping contest episode. <laughs> um, he was giving himself a hard time. I'm like, you've never been burping on camera before. It's a yeah, whole it's, different it's, world. It's different to a normal burp. You yes. Know, when you're sitting on your couch and you're watching telly, it's easy. But when you've got the camera on, it's a different story, man. Exactly. So it's like when someone comes in and just questions you hardcore about something that you weren't even thinking about, you're like, oh, hold on yeah. a second. <laughs> like, give me a chance to catch up. And then, yeah. so let it grow. It's yeah. a grower, not a shower. Exactly. That's what I tell the missus. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> awesome, man. So I'm going to introduce you now to the show. Do it. Um, it is so cool to have you back on the podcast. Episode 12, you was on originally, and it was I had a great response. It was an awesome show. You've had some amazing experiences. Um, and after after we spoke, you said there was more, which is really cool as well. So I was like, we've got to speak soon <laughs> yes. and get the rest, man. <laughs> yes. Yeah, man, it's, uh, it's an honor to be back on here. Um, it's been really awesome connecting with you and, you know, watching the content that you're creating. Um, in regards to that, you know, the laundry list of paranormal experiences that I have to share, I did it almost for 15 years just with ghost hunting. And then on top of that, I trailed off and started doing the Bigfoot stuff and crypto and all that, you know, so um, I don't do the ghost hunting stuff anymore, but I have plenty of educational stories that I think I can bring to the table. So that's what we're doing today. We're talking about that and a bunch of whatever else you bring to the table. Awesome. So on the on the last show, you spoke about the fact that um, you had to step away from ghost hunting. Yep. Because it was getting dangerous, really. It wasn't mm -hmm. good for you. It wasn't yep. good for your health, really. Mm -hmm. Um so could you tell us a little bit more about that? The, the, it must have been difficult to make that decision because obviously you enjoyed doing that. Yeah. Um, but Yeah. Um, so just to kind of summarize quickly why I stepped away, um, I noticed that after an extreme encounter at the Velisca Axe murder house, I had a very demonic encounter. And after I had that, for the months after, I'd say probably about two months, maybe three, um, I started to notice just different relationships in my life started to crumble. I'm, I've always been really close to my parents and there, there it is. I guess <laughs> coffee, coffee works. See? Man, you make it look so easy. <laughs> <laughs> you keep talking. It's going to happen. I promise you. When it happens, it's coming. Let me tell you. <laughs> that's right. Uh, but yeah, I've always been close to my parents. Um, and I just noticed that we, we started to, you know, misfire and have a lot of miscommunication and misunderstandings. And um, even my brother and I, who I, I've never met siblings that are as close to each other as my brother and I are. Um, we've always been super, super close. We started to bicker at each other and just not see things the same. And I just had a literally a come to Jesus moment where the Lord just laid on my heart like, hey, man, it's, it's time to walk away from this if you want certain things. And I was looking to meet my future wife, get married, you know, have some stability. And there was a lot of instability in my life when I was head first into the paranormal. And obviously you start at one point and dabble a little bit by a little bit by a little bit. And then you end up way deeper than you ever expected to be. And yeah. you end up in a whole lot darker situation than you ever thought you would allow yourself to be in. You start off by saying, I'd never go anywhere that has a demonic history. And then you start making exceptions and excuses and things like that. And then when you start to bring these things home with you, 
and they start to affect your everyday life and your everyday existence. And when you're sleeping, things are waking you up in the middle of the night because you're bringing work home with you. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it takes a, it takes a toll and you really have to reassess things. And that's exactly what I did. Um, and as I stepped away from the paranormal, things in my life really began to improve and relationships just healed. And it was a number of years before I met my future wife. Actually, it was six years. Well, six and a half, I'd say. Six and a half years um, that, uh, no, I'm sorry. Wow, my math is way off. <laughs> I stopped in 2013, June of 2013. I met my wife January of, of 2016. So two and a half years. Wow, math at <laughs> eight o'clock on a, on a Monday night. <laughs> two and a half years. It wasn't a terribly long wait. Um, yeah. But still, like after I met my wife, I asked her, I was like, had I not stopped and I was still really involved in this, where would that put us? And she's like, wouldn't put us anywhere. Cause like yeah. she didn't want that in her life. And, you know, so um, yeah, it was just, there's been so many things that have happened in my experience as a paranormal investigator um, that I'm thankful for, that I can be even more thankful for now because I can look at it in a different perspective and a more educational yeah. perspective. So uh, yeah, that's why I don't do it anymore. It's really for my protection, my family's protection. I'm bringing my first child into the world here in a couple months, and I don't want my son to be exposed to that. Um, I want to educate him on the powers of the spiritual realm because they're very, very present at all times. And even if you're not interacting with them, they're around us at all times, in my opinion. Yeah, and, you know, so I just want to be able to educate him because for kids, they haven't been filtered by this world yet. So they're going to be able to experience, see, hear, yeah. and feel things that we don't anymore because we've been desensitized to it. Yeah. We've been taught to just brush it off, to overlook it. It was a shadow that moved like, all these things, kids don't know any better. So a lot of times when a kid comes to your bedside and says, hey, there's a man standing in my room, probably not physically, but spiritually, yeah. very possible. Yeah, you know? but it, so, happened, it happened to me. So I've really? spoke about it. I've spoke about it on the show before. When I was yeah. 10, I woke up during the night. It must have been about the early hours of the morning. Um, and there was a man in my room, full-bodied, sitting there at my desk, looking up at me while I was in my bunk bed. My brother was on the bottom bunk. I was on the top bunk. I have spoke about it before on, on podcasts. I do, I do remember this, yeah. Yeah. And and it was a full-bodied... Um, I, I describe him as looking like William Shakespeare. That's how he looked. He was an yep. old-school-looking guy. Yep. Um, but he, I, I saw him. He was there. Um, and he was there for a long time. And so, yeah, and I, that was my first big experience. Yeah. So I think kids are just open to these sort of things, aren't they? They are, man. Like, they, like I said, they just don't know any better. And because, like, and I, I was never a guy that had, like, imaginary friends. I had a huge imagination growing up, but I never did the imaginary friends thing, and I never gave ghosts a second thought. Maybe it was because of my Christian upbringing. Um, maybe it was because of prayers of protection from my parents growing up. I don't know. Um, it also wasn't relevant in, in the world that I grew up in, in the, in the late eighties and nineties, it just yeah. wasn't a thing, you know, in the movies, it was maybe a little bit, but then the, the mid two thousands, all of a sudden you start seeing ghost hunters and ghost adventures and every other paranormal special you can think of. So in today's world, just like with every other piece of content that we are exposed to, it's everywhere. And you yeah. can't get away from it. And so it's hard to not be exposed to it and go seeking it because you're like, interesting. I wonder what that's like, you know? Yeah. And then people get themselves, like I said, a lot deeper than they expected. And I think that's where my new position in the paranormal comes in as someone just to educate and to give a different yeah. idea or perspective before you go crazy and jump in the ballistic axe murder house and tell the, the, the murderer to come, you know, put an axe to yeah. your neck. Yeah, God, you know, man. so that's terrifying. <laughs> it is, yes. <laughs> so, what do you what do you think? Like, because obviously you was out doing this a lot, so obviously you was having experiences a lot. Yeah, was it getting to a point where hearing knocks, getting feelings, it wasn't enough? You needed more. Is that absolutely, what? absolutely. Like, it the best way to 
to describe where we got to was a heavy drug user where you start off by shooting up a little and yeah. then you're shooting up three, four, five, six, seven times a day by the time you get, you know, into rehab because you have no control. You're looking yeah. for a bigger dose. You're looking for a bigger hit. And just like you said, man, stare, uh, someone walking down the stairs and you know, no one is upstairs and you know, no one's walking down them stairs. Yeah. yeah. It gets you excited. Cause then you're like, now I have something to go after. There's something yeah. here, but you completely disregard the fact that you literally heard yeah. these footsteps. Yeah. And that's massive. Like, I mean, think about when you're a kid, you're home alone. Maybe it's the first time your parents feel confident of leaving you at your house by yourself. And you're not used to the settling sounds of your home. And you start hearing these clicks, these bangs, these booms, and all of a sudden you are absolutely terrified. Yeah. yeah. Like that, that like amazement and wonder in regards to that, these like small experiences that should never leave because yeah. you should always be ready, always be on guard for what that could be, what could be coming. Yeah. And when you start to get to that point where your guard is completely down for a knock or a bang or a door yeah. opens up, like you still might jump in like, oh, dang, that was crazy. But then you mm. completely disregard it. Yeah. And that's exactly, yeah, that's exactly where we got to. It just wasn't enough. And so you're going in saying like, come on, touch me, grab me, push yeah. me down the stairs. Like I remember so many people on our crew, like push us down the stairs. Like, come yeah. over here. Like, punch me in the face. Give me a black eye. Like, are you kidding yeah, really? me? That's crazy. Yeah. Like, what are we yeah. doing? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And yeah, it, it takes you into that, that, the discussion of what really the spiritual realm is like. And are we dealing with people that are passed on, that are stuck in between purgatory, that are demonic? You know, there's so many different perspectives and ideals that come along with this. So let's look yeah. at it from the perspective of people that are passed on. Say you're interacting with a former family member who's passed on, but you don't know it yet. And you're in there going, come on, I know someone's in here. Stop being such a little pussy and, and knock on the wall for me. And you're, it's your grandfather. And he's like, what? Yeah. Like, yeah. When did yeah. I ever raise you to, to speak that way to another human being? Like, these are just the things that we just completely start to disregard when we're like, what's the next big thing we can find? What's the yeah. next big thing we can capture on film to make ourselves internet famous? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so it's like, we need to take, if you're going to do this, you need to be safe and you need to, to take it all in and not just think of like, what's the next quick hit that I can get and make myself famous so I can make money doing this and quit my job. It's never going to get you where you want it to go. Yeah. Plain and simple. It's it's very interesting because knocks and bangs and stuff like that has always scared. I've always been quite scared of the paranormal. I know that might sound strange because I do a paranormal podcast now. Mm -hmm. It's always fascinated me. Yeah. But at the same time, it's always really scared me as well. Mm -hmm. Right. The thought of seeing a ghost now that really freaks me out. But I'd love it because obviously that'd be amazing, but it still really scares me. Yeah. Um, since I've been doing this show, I've had a few experiences that seeing things in the corner of my eye. Uh, I've seen like weird shadow people, I would say, mm -hmm. and, it, and it, it's really quite scary. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's been since doing this show, so it's not been long. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I don't know if it's because I'm opening myself to all this sort of stuff and, and talking about it all the time. And the other day as well, it's interesting when you said um, how things don't phase you. I was watching, so I got in late on, on a Monday night. I was watching Monday night football. And I'm just sitting there watching the game. All the kids are in bed, the wife's in bed. And I heard someone, not just a couple of bangs, I heard someone walk down the stairs. Yeah. And I've looked and there's no one there. I'm just expecting to see one of the kids or the, or the wife. Someone's there. Like I, It just sounded like someone walked down the stairs. Yeah. And I've looked, yeah. there's no one there. And I'm like, someone definitely walked down the stairs. And it didn't scare me. It didn't phase me. At, and normally that would scare the crap out of me. Yeah, <laughs> that is terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, not today. <laughs> I just carried on <laughs> watching the game. 
And I just, and even my, I was sitting there thinking, how am I not scared right now? All the lights yeah. are off. I've just got the telly on. <laughs> and I've heard someone walk down the stairs, like literally yeah. step, 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 step. And I'm not scared. Yeah. And I found that quite worrying, really. <laughs> yeah. I don't want any more than that, you know, but. Right. Yeah. It's, it's crazy you say that because that's exactly what happens when you're exposing yourself to this field more and more and more. Because yeah. like I said, I've been away from this almost 10 years now. I dabbled for a very, very small amount from September of 2020 to September of 2021. I did two technical investigations, although I convinced myself that I wasn't actually taking part in them. And then things in my life really started to change again. And God's yeah. like, listen, you need to reevaluate what you've been doing these last couple of years, or like this last year. And yeah. after I did that, things started to turn around. Um, but as I've stepped away from the paranormal, dude, I used to be invincible. Nothing would scare me. Nothing. Like someone could jump around the corner. I could be in a house alone. And I might, you know, just a little jump, but yeah. I wouldn't be phased in the least. And now I get scared walking around the corner, my wife sitting in a chair and I didn't know she was there. I will jump <laughs> out of my skin. Yeah. Like yeah. we become so desensitized because just like we do with media and everything in today's world, we're looking for so much, just constant. Yeah. And that's what it happens. Like when you have that first experience, you want to have that second experience. And then your second experience comes with three or four and you're like, oh, I need to top that. I need to get six or seven. And then it's like, a night of an hour of just straight activity out of a six hour investigation. You're like, I mean, that was cool, but why didn't it last all six hours? And so you completely disregard it. Yeah. And if you're in this to try to educate, whether it's educate yourself, educate the masses, educate some random stranger on the internet. If you're disregarding the little things, what are you going to do when the big things happen? You're going to misconstrue them. You're going to be overly emotional. You're going to overreact. And it's never going to be what it should be. You know, and I'm guilty of that. Like when I saw my first Bigfoot, I literally screamed, oh my gosh, there's a Bigfoot. It was my first time ever seeing something like that. I wasn't a believer at the time. So of course I'm going to overreact and over, you know, be over emotional. But as you're doing this more and more and more, you need to be like teaching yourself how to properly go about these things and try to keep your calm, stay collected. And um, automatically, your first reaction should always be, what could that have actually been? Yeah. And then when you can't find an actual logical reason for what you just experienced, then you go into the investigation mode. Then you start to ask the questions. Then you start to make, you know, theories or suggestions for what that could have been. And then you start to go about it. You set up that crime scene tape, baby. Get out your black lights and you look for the blood trail. All of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, 100%. that's what we're losing. That's what we've lost in the paranormal field is yeah. people are just like, let's pull up TikTok. Let's go into an abandoned building. Let's see if we can get someone to scream and chuck it up as paranormal. And people yeah. believe it. Hmm. And it's just, it's all about views and likes isn't it. That's the, yes, that's the yes, problem. yes, yes, man. And that's like, for me with my YouTube channel, I don't have a million subscribers. I don't even have a thousand subscribers, but the community that I've built there is about genuine interactions with other human beings that have a place to come to for an escape from the reality we all live in, which is very overwhelming at times. And that Absolutely. means more to me yeah. than a, a climbing subscriber count and views on my videos. Now, those do mean something, but it comes with hard work and dedication to the craft yeah. that you get the end result. Just like a participation trophy. I don't think those are necessary. Just because you participated in a game, but you lost, guess what? Buck up, get better, win the next one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you just, you have to get better with your tools, your craft, your questioning, your thought process, everything. Because if yeah. you don't, you're going to miss the mark every time, even if you don't think you are. Yeah, 100%, man. Yeah. So when, when you stepped away for good mm -hmm. from, from paranormal, 
did did anything else happen like paranormal around you did you because you said you, you know that there's there's things around us all the time mm-hmm. did anything else happen that... oh yeah oh yeah like i feel like there was this like filtration period that i went through as i was trying to desensitize myself because like i've always been very sensitive to the paranormal always like well let me say from the moment i realized the paranormal realm existed around me in the way that it does. Um, so from like eighth grade to now, I've always been very sensitive to it. And the, the biggest thing that happened to me after I walked away, um, I actually went back to Villisca to uh, be a part of a, a production that was happening at the house at the time and to do some interviews and things like that. And I was inside the the house while they were filming a scene in the kitchen and I was standing at the base of the stairs for the, in in the Villisca Axe Murder house. And my brother was there and we're of course quiet on the set as they're filming. And I literally start hearing like tapping and movement in the upstairs bedrooms, which is where the both parents stayed and the actual, um, the siblings of the family stayed. And so of course, like, again paranormal you hear something you've trained yourself to like perk up turn your ears up louder and really like what's going on here and i started to hear like this little chitter chatter and the more i listened to it the more i realized it was a very high-pitched raspy voice that was calling me to come upstairs and it was saying jesse jesse come up here come up here. And dude, it was the craziest thing. Cause it was like, I could feel like spiritual energy, like tugging at my back and like every part of my body wanted to go, but my spirit knew like, uh, uh-uh, we're not doing this. Cause it, this was maybe three months after my demonic encounter. So it's still very fresh for me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I remember I put my hand on my brother's shoulder and I whispered into his ear, I said, do not let me go upstairs because I'm starting to feel like I don't have the power to keep myself down here. And he turns and he's like, what are you talking about, dude? I was like, I feel like this demon thing that I countered downstairs is calling me upstairs. Wow. And I don't know what's going to happen if I go up there. And dude, that, that still rocks me to this day. Like, I don't know what would have happened if I went up there because the interaction I had in the cellar I've always said that I was like 98% possessed and I was like right on that, that, that verge of like popping off and having zero control of who I was. Yeah. And I feel like I've always told myself he wanted to finish the job. He wanted to take full control for whatever reason. Like why me? I don't know because I was stupid enough to put myself in the position that I did that night where I was taunting and trying to put myself in the mind of the killer and Again, these are the things you need to be aware of. Like, what are you doing? And what could the repercussions look like? Yeah. And that was the repercussion for me. And so that was the craziest thing that's happened. But beyond that, man, like I've had so many, just so many classic <laughs> paranormal experiences since then that I'd be like, ah, wow, it's been a while since I felt that. Like I still walk into to buildings and I feel the energy. I feel the darkness. I feel the heaviness. Um, we have a location here in Iowa called the Malvern Manor, and it actually has this weird tie-in with the Villisca Axe Murder House. A lot of people believe that the person who murdered the family and the two children that spent the night there actually traveled by train and spent the night in Malvern Manor. Um, wow. And so, like, there's been a lot of people trying to uncover that connection and things like that. We've had TV shows coming and trying to figure that out. But I've been there a couple times, but I went there um, for the very first time just to walk through again, I'd been away from the paranormal for several years at this point. I was with my brother again and just walking through at night. Cause of course, if you're going to go somewhere to abandoned, you have to go at night. I mean, it's just yeah. what you do. Go be done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we're walking through and we we're going to go around this corner and I could just sense like there's something around this corner that is not going to interact well with me. And like uh-huh. my shield just like went up and like the Holy spirit's guidance was like, Jesse, how many times do we have to have this conversation that you should not be putting yourself <laughs> in this position, you know? Yeah. And so I told my brother, I was like, dude, I have to, we have to leave. 
Like we have to get out of here. I'm pushing that boundary. I should not be up here. Again, I don't know what would have happened. Maybe we just sort of heard a knock on the wall. Maybe I would have saw full, full blown apparition. I don't know, but I'm not going to put myself in the position to find out. Yeah. And you know, so then you fast forward to 2020 when I got the opportunity to go to the bloodiest 47 acres in the United States known as the Missouri state penitentiary, one of the most violent, bloody prisons in the existence of the United States. It's completely shut down, open for overnight tours. And I told myself, well, I mean, I'm an urbexer, an urban explorer. I'm going to go in and I'll film that video and let the other people that I'm with do the ghost hunting. Listen, (laughs) you're in the realm of that. You're going to be consumed by it. And in that prison, I saw a full, full blown apparition. And I was at one end of a, a cell cell block. We looked all the way down and it was me and a, another guy that saw the exact same thing. So complete 100% validation. And he literally wow. peeked around the corner. The light of our um, like flashlights and stuff glistened on his eyeballs. And he shot back and he was far enough, but detailed enough that we could tell he was in a completely separate blocked off area so he was behind two sets of bars like he was that thick and present that we could tell like he's he's literally in this location so we took off running and when we got to where we saw him dude you want to talk about like electrical energy every hair stood straight up goosebumps everywhere i mean i'm getting goosebumps right now just talking about it yeah yeah and so of course you get that high and then we, a year later, went to Farrar. And uh, for, for those who don't know, haunting at Farrar is an old school um, from the early 1900s. It was um, vacated in the early 2000s. And my brother and I uh, have done, gosh, my brother's, I think, over 50, 60, 70 investigations. And they're just a crazy amount. He used wow. to be the, the tour guide there. Um, he's been there more than anybody, except for the people who live there. Um, and I've done 30 plus, 40 plus, somewhere in there too. Um, and we went to do like the final investigation, which we're actually going to release a little mini documentary about that cool. um, that night. Um, but again, like I got roped into it. My brain was turned off to it at first, but then that you start getting that adrenaline and things start popping off. And then all of a sudden you're right there with the tools asking the questions. And so it was a wake up call for me because literally the next day, my car went out and then my wife's car went out and literally the day after I left the prison, my transmission in my car went out. And then the next day something went wrong in my wife's car. Yeah. Like there's no coincidence. Here. Yeah. You know, like that's what I'm saying. Like if you ever get to a point where you feel like I shouldn't be doing this, listen to that, or at least explore that because I did step away. I, it, I was gone for eight years at that point in 2020. I stepped away for, no, I'm sorry, seven years. And I was like, oh, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm cool. Like I've worked for seven years to put up my, my walls again. Like the spiritual realm knows what to do to bait you with the fishing line and reel you right back in. And then you're deep in it again, you know? So um, not to say that's going to happen to everybody. It's not. But that's just my experience. And even as a person who stepped away for it so, for, from it for so long, like I'm still susceptible to these things. And yeah. like we just recently moved to our new town home. And just like you, you're up late watching TV. Everyone else is sleeping. Now, I'm not used to the pops, bangs, and booms in this place. And I swear to you, I heard my, wa- my wife walking across the bedroom floor. And I was like, oh, okay, she's getting up to do something. Um, she's pregnant. So maybe using the restroom, something like that, who knows? And I'm just waiting and no one ever comes. And I was like, okay, maybe I just didn't hear her walk back to the bed. I don't know. So I asked her the next day, I was like, you, uh, around this time you're walking through the bedroom, right? She's like, no, I, I didn't get out of bed once last night. Wow. And I'm just like, okay. (laughs) And I, and I'm a full fledged believer in the power of prayer and pleading the blood of Jesus over every location that I live in and stay in and things like that and believe in that protection. Um, I think it was a case of just not being aware of those settling sounds because I've since heard those sounds again. But it's again, it's like, I, 
I don't need to give my energy into it. And if I don't need to, I'm not going to. So even if it were paranormal, I'm never going to allow it to become paranormal, you know, yeah. just because I am distancing myself even more so now after, you know, the little bit of stuff that I had happened after I kind of tiptoed my way back in, you know? Yeah. So like, even if you're not in it, just like you said, man, like since you started this podcast, you've noticed more things. Yeah. And I got the question a lot when I was doing this. I don't ever want to see a ghost. I'm terrified by this stuff. I don't want to see it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to experience it. I never want to see a pass on relative. I don't want any of that. And I always told them, I said, if you close yourself off to the possibility, it will not happen because I'm a firm believer that it would not waste its energy on someone that it cannot impress. Yeah. Because I'm coming from the perspective that the spiritual realm, the paranormal realm is demonic. It's either demonic or angelic. And angels aren't looking for us to fluff up their feathers. Like they're just not looking for an ego stroke. A demon, yeah. on the other hand, is. So an angel's not going to come and be like, I'm going to knock on that door just to get their willies going. What's in it for them? They live in head, like they're from heaven, the, he the heavenly realm. There's nothing down here that's going to be like, oh, dang, this is awesome. Yeah. And for <laughs> demons, they will pop to that because now they're, they're drawing you yeah. back in, you know? And, and so it's always being open to the fact that as you're dabbling in these things, you're opening yourself up more to them. So when you said that, dude, I wasn't surprised at all. Because we found that if you go to a location that's supposedly haunted and nothing is happening, if yeah. you start to talk about the occurrences of another haunted location, the one you're in, for lack of a better phrase, gets jealous and things start popping off. And it's crazy, man. We started to test that theory out and yeah. we call it the jealous haunt. We'd start talking about Velisca and Ferrar, and all of a sudden, I'm getting goosebumps. I'm covered in goosebumps right now everything dude would just start going crazy. And again, I think it's, if you, if you subscribe to the idea of it being demonic or whatever, you're looking at them going, hold on a second. I, I want some attention here. And if they're not giving me any attention, I better get their attention and things start going crazy, you know? Yeah. So um, again, like I'm glad that these things are still fresh to you and that you are taking note of like, I didn't really get too worked yeah. up about those footsteps. I'll find I find it quite worrying. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't, like, get, I, I, I didn't get worked up about it. It didn't, it didn't scare me. And I found that quite worrying because normally it would. <laughs> you know? Right. Exactly. Cause you're thinking, okay, even if it is paranormal, your wife and kids are sleeping where you heard that, that sound come from. Yeah. And we don't know what that was. No matter what, dude, like whether you've done this for 15 years or 15 minutes, you don't know what that was. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And we should never just like brush it off. And if that's something that you don't want in your home, all you have to say is you need to get out because you do not own this domain. It is not yours for the taking and you got to go. Bro. Yeah, 100%. Like, because <laughs> as, as a person in this realm, yes, we all have energy. We all put it off and we put off EMF. And that's what these spiritual energies are made up of is EMF, electrical magnetic field. And as we put out more energy into that, they take it the and more, they feed on yeah. it and they pump themselves up, which is why some of these haunted locations are so insane. Because people go in and they literally pump energy into these places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they don't know how to go in calm, collected, and concise. And so you go in spewing this and spewing that. Dude, it's like throwing red paint on a white wall. You're just not going to scrub it off. It's always going to be there. Always. Yeah. You know, so you have to be careful. And I think it's good for you to have a podcast like this because you're opening yourself up to what is possible so that you can also be prepared for what is possible. Yeah, yeah. So that's a different perspective well, to look at it from. I just find it all so interesting, like the whole subject. So mm -hmm. for me, I, I don't particularly want to go out and prove that there's ghosts. And, you know, I've seen right. a ghost. I know that there's ghosts. Yep. Um, 
but I just find it fascinating and love hearing people's stories like yourself, you know? So, yeah. but I don't particularly want one in my house. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm very relieved to hear that. Cause there's a lot of yeah. people who are like, I want to move to the most haunted location in the world. And no, just no, that's this. not for me, man. No, like, no. come on. <laughs> I want to talk to people that live there, but I don't yep. want. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Let want... them educate yeah. me on what that's like. Yeah. 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 I find, yeah. I find it. I find it fascinating, mm-hmm. but yeah, I don't want Absolutely. to. Absolutely. I don't want to invite it. <laughs> <laughs> but it must be difficult, though, because obviously it's something you've done for so long and you obviously find it interesting yourself. Yes. It must be difficult to, to walk away and to ignore those feelings. It must be hard. It's yeah, dude, it's it's very <laughs> it's very difficult, especially too, because like my wife is very sensitive to this stuff as well. And we both yeah. come at this from a biblical perspective. So we both know, like for us. It's just not a good idea for us to dabble in that. But we both like she'll walk into a place and be like, I don't know, there's something about this place or or there's something about this person that I just met. And she's like, I just got this feeling like they just they gave me this feeling like I need to be on guard, you know. And so and I I can't remember if I said this on on the, the first time I was on, but like our bodies are the best tool that anybody can use. Like our bodies will tell us. Yeah, go forward or back up plain yeah. and simple man hair standing up goosebumps your your conscious your soul the holy spirit whatever you want to call it whatever it is for you like yeah. listen to those things because they are warning systems that have been put in place in our bodies to protect us not just yeah. to make us you know like look cowardice like no these are there for a reason I'll listen to them. use yeah, them I'll respect them, them. them appreciate them you know? Yeah. Um, and I've been able to do that more since I stepped away, you know, especially after I met my wife, like, why would I want to put myself in a position that can, that could harm her spiritually, yeah. mentally, emotionally, whatever, because things from the yeah. spiritual realm can do all of those things, man. Like I was emotionally turned off to a lot of things. I was searching for the wrong things in people. I was searching for the wrong things in life because I was so focused on one thing. And it really just clouds your judgment, clouds your perspective, and gets you centrically focused on one thing when there's so many more beautiful things to be doing on a weekend. Like, that's what's so great. Like, you do this podcast, but you're out living life with your family, having experiences, growing together, loving together, living together. Like, you're not consumed by this because you appreciate it, you're passionate about it, but you know there's a place for it. Yeah. Yeah, and that place is here. Yeah. And then yeah. I'm going to leave it there and walk this way and go do other things. Yeah. Where I, my life revolved around ghost hunting. Every weekend, where can we go to ask a ghost what year they died to confirm yeah. it on the tombstone that we just stood next to and asked? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I feel like with, with, this subject, with this subject, you have to walk away from it every now and again just to give yourself a, because it couldn't. It become it can become so crazy and can yes. be so overwhelming. Yes. When you think that. and I can see why some people don't like the paranormal subject. I can see that some people don't like talking about it. They won't entertain it. And I, yep. I get it. I get why, because it can be overpowering. Yeah, like for my for my wife, she loves her job, absolutely loves what she does for a living, but she still needs to take a vacation to recenter and refocus yeah. and recharge. And if you're not allowing yourself to do that, when it comes to things like the paranormal, like if you feel like you're someone that goes in fully protected, listen, if you're going six months in a row without a break, without a a refocus, I promise you, you're going to come home with something you don't want taken along. Plain and simple, because you're, you're not going to be as aware of it as you would be if you just took a a second and just relaxed and disconnected you need, that. That. you need that don't you you, you do. definitely need that yes absolutely it's extremely extremely important yeah so my relaxation is watching football and then the vikings yeah well <laughs> there's not much relaxation there but then that's not relaxing either <laughs> <laughs> oh god bless the vikings but holy crap they give us a heart condition they do they really do man but i love them <laughs> oh me too <laughs> Purple and gold till I die, baby. Love the stress. Yeah, skull, baby. <laughs> it keeps me young or makes me old, one of the two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so before we move on from, from, from the ghost hunting 
yeah stuff is there anything else you feel like you could share that happened any experiences that happened that you'd like to share or i yeah there's a a, a situation <laughs> experience from Velisca. since we've been talking a lot about Velisca, um the besides the demonic encounter that i had um I mean, there's, gosh, maybe sometime that we have me on, we'll just take the whole time and talk about Ballisca experiences yeah, yeah, because be cool. it's just, it's such a crazy realm of experiences there. But the craziest thing that happened to me there before I had my demonic encounter, my, my cousin Tyler and our friend Ashton, we were up in the children's bedroom on the second floor of the house. And we didn't, we weren't using any tools or any scientific methods. We were just in there just our bodies, asking questions, feeling for feelings, you know, things like that. And my cousin Tyler, he was sitting on a kid's bed that looks down the hallway into the parent's bedroom. Now, the staircase upstairs comes directly in up to the foot of the parent's bed. So anything that comes up those stairs, you'd immediately see it from where Tyler is sitting. And we had this feeling that we were interacting with the father of the family, um, Josiah. Or, uh, yeah, Josiah JB is what people, uh, most people know him as JB Moore. Um, and we're just talking, we could hear like shuffling, we could hear like boot prints and, you know, things that were just like signaling us, like, okay, there's something else in there. Cause we were the only three people upstairs and only three people moving around in the house. And all of a sudden, like all at once, us three started to feel really on edge. And like, we started to get that kind of like static energy where our, our bodies are like, listen, like there's, there's something else here, like something different than I think you realize. And so we leaned into that a little bit more, started asking a little more questions like, Hey, if there's something else here, like show, show yourself to us, like come into the room, come join us in the room and let us talk to you. Let us get to know you. And I'm sitting in the corner. So the hallway is to my direct left-hand side. So I'd have to stand up, turn to my left, and then take a sharp left turn to go down the hallway. So I can't see down the hallway at all. The only thing I can see is kind of like the corner of the door that leads into the attic, which is where people believe that the, the murderer hid the night that he killed everybody. So it's already a, a creepy enough thing that you're sitting mere feet from this door. And we, we start to feel like a shift in the mood after all that electrical energy kind of coursed through us. And so we all just like started to like really focus on it and just like, come on, just come on, come on into this room with us. Come on. We're waiting here for you. Come on into this room. And if it's not the parents, if it's not the kids, if it's something else that's trying to make contact with us, come on in here. We're giving you the invitation. Get in here now. And dude, I turned to my left and what was a wide open doorway cast with streetlights from outside is now pitch black and fully consumed by a creature, a being, an entity that filled the door frame from top to bottom and left to right. There wasn't an ounce of light allowed in that space anymore. And dude, like, I didn't know what to think because I was like, I know there's nothing there. I know there shouldn't be anything there is maybe what I should say. I know there shouldn't be anything there. And I know that I should be able to see light, but I can't find it. I can see the light all around the room, but I can't see the light hitting the hallway. Wow. And all of a sudden it started to move through the doorway. And it was almost like it was being like forced through because it was so huge. And that thing came in directly up to my cousin, Tyler. I remember he cowered into a heap of a man shrieking and i watched this giant i'm dude this thing was like filling the room and i'd say that the ceiling back in these houses these ceilings were a lot lower than they are now maybe seven feet tall but i mean it was top to bottom it, there was no room and this giant mass just turned towards myself and ashton sitting across or across the room from him and he football rushed us and he got it's weird because we were not sitting next to each other but it got into both of our faces at the exact same time and it let out this like growling hissing bellowing sound and i could feel 
its hot breath, like just covering me. And dude, I have never outside of my demonic encounter felt fear. Like I dude, it was like on my skin, like laying as a layer of skin on top of my skin, just fear. Every hair on my body was standing up. My goosebumps had goosebumps that had goosebumps. Wow. I was thinking to myself, how are we going to get out of this? And I cowered down into myself, closed my eyes, cupped my face, just sitting there shaking. And all of a sudden we were like, it's just gone. And Ashton's now sitting in the corner sobbing because it was so overwhelming. Tyler's freaking out. Like, what did we just experience? And I'm going, dude, like I, my, it felt like someone wiped my memory. It was like the men in black came with their little flasher gun and just wiped everything. Like we had to find ourselves again and recollect yeah. ourselves and be like, okay, we're in the Velisca house. We're upstairs. We're in the kid's bedroom. My name's Jesse. You're Ashton. You're Tyler. Wow. So, and I don't remember what year that was. I think <laughs> it was like 2009 ish. Um, but I could be wrong. Anyways, wow. the TV show Ghost Adventures actually finally, we wanted them to go to Velisca for so long and they finally went to Velisca. And the episode ended and the, the results were pretty cool. But at the very end, they showed like a seven second clip of them walking down that exact hallway with the attic door open in the exact entity rushed out of the attic and into the bedroom where we were sitting where they were walking away from and i saw it on live tv and i stood up and i said that that is exactly what ran at us in that bedroom and to see it caught on camera to validate what i saw what we saw what we felt in that moment dude yeah. That is a moment I will never forget. Did they pick up on it on the camera on the, on the program? Did they pick up on that on the program or they they saw it? They didn't really acknowledge like what they thought it was because it was at the very tip end. He was like doing his wrapping up narrative. Like okay. we were at Beliska, we had a great experience, this and that. And for some reason, it was just like this last right before the episode ended, it went into the next show. It was right at the end. And usually I'm not paying attention at that point, but for some reason I was so locked in and I saw it and I was like, dude, mine was blown. So after that, we decided to start digging into maybe what that was. And this is our theory, but we believe, like I said, you go in and you speak enough energy into something, you're going to get something in return. And we believe it was the energy core of the Velisca house all the negative energy of people coming in saying, Hey, I'm the killer. I'm going to kill you. This and that, you know, attack me, take an an ax to my head, all these crazy things, seances, whatever, all bubbled up together. And it's not that there was certain people haunting the house. It was the spiritual entity that was haunting the house and deceiving and causing these things to happen. Because we started to interact with what we believe to be that exact same thing more and more and more. And that's why we think it's so big, so yeah. powerful. And then, like, dude, it just absolutely blew my mind. And at that oh, point, I never yeah. thought I was going to beat that experience. And then, obviously, I had the demonic one. Um, but, uh, dude, like, that's just, like, a tip of the iceberg for what Velisca used yeah. to be. Because it's not the same anymore. And it used to be this, like just beacon of paranormal activity anybody could stay there and have the most mind-blowing night of their life um and then a lot go of there. changed <laughs> what's that I wanna, i'd like to go there <laughs> dude if you ever <laughs> if you ever make it here obviously i would heavily encourage you to come to iowa because i was the best yeah 100 yeah. percent, man 100%. plain and simple <laughs> <laughs> uh not really but in a lot of ways it's amazing um, if you're looking for paranormal stuff, obviously Iowa is an amazing spot, <laughs> which is why we made Squatch Iowa and Haunted Iowa. Um, yeah. But I have great connections at the Velisca House. We'd be able to go in and tour it top to bottom, left and right. I'd get you the wow. full experience. 
Um, yeah. it, it really is uh, a marvel. It, it really is. Historically, it's a marvel. The fact that it's still unsolved all these years later is a marvel. And uh, yeah. the history of the paranormal experiences in that house is a marvel. Um, so if and when that were to ever happen, yeah, I will be there. Um, and we'll be filming. Um, and we'll be putting it out as a podcast and a yes. video on it. It's all me. Done. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that 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 uh, is definitely one of the craziest things I ever experienced. Yeah. Sure. So you think that that was that was energy created by everyone that's gone in there, and it's just come together. So it's yep. like, uh, manifested from everyone's energy. Dude, manifested is the is the perfect word. And the first person I ever mentioned that to suggest that was my brother. And I remember when he said that, I was like, dude, nothing has made more sense about Velisca and everything that people experienced in experience there than what you just said because you will experience everything and again i think it depends on your perspective if you believe in heaven and hell or you believe in the afterlife if you believe that people can be forgotten and left behind things like that like obviously depending on where you sit on that is going to influence how you interact with some of these things for us we believe when you die you're either eternally judged to go to heaven or hell so there is no in between And so there has to be another explanation for what these things are. And evil shows itself in a various forms. And you put enough evil into one place, you're going to manifest something, you know? So like, just like powerful when energy is a powerful, if if, if you're with someone for, if you work with someone for a day, that's really super negative. That energy can rub off on you. Our energy is powerful. And if you're with someone who's positive, so it's... uh, You look at at people that have caused so much harm to so many people, whether it would be a serial serial killer or uh, someone who is convicted of rape consistently, things like that. Like you look into their history and it's generally built on a foundation of evil and negativity, neglect, overlooked, you know, yeah. things like that, those of us that have been raised on a foundation of positivity and optimism and things like that, we don't find ourselves going down that path. But like you said, you hang out in a room with a person that's super negative and super down for long enough, dude, you walk out of there mildly depressed. Yeah. Because <laughs> you take on that. Like we because, give this off and yeah. people take it on. And so like, that's why so many people talk in today's world, like go out and be a beacon of light to, the, this, to this world because we need it. The more positivity we bump pump out into this world, the better people are going to, going to feel. You talk to someone at the store, give them a smile, ask how their day is doing. I guarantee you it will change their day for the better. Even if you don't know it, internally that seed is planted and it will grow and blossom. I promise you. That's something I try and do. I know it's, it's, it's hard to always be super positive and happy. No one can do it all the time. Yes. I try, but Mm -hmm. it is impossible. Um, but as much as you can be positive and as much as you can give other people positivity, I, I really believe that that's an important thing. I it really is, do. Man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because it's, it's, it's as powerful as negative. <laughs> exactly. Think. Absolutely. Yeah, I think we focus so <laughs> much on the power of negative energy and we, we race after these things. Like we want to know the mind of a serial killer. We want to yeah. know the mind of a person who goes and murders an entire family. Why don't we want to go get to know the minds and the brains and the attitudes of the people who've gone and changed the world in positive ways? Why don't we get Netflix documentaries about those people? You know, it's because in in a lot of ways, positivity doesn't sell. Negativity sells. Scary things sell. They get us on the edge of our seats. We want to look and be like, oh, my gosh. Like they want these things make us feel better about ourselves. So therefore... We can turn it on after a hard day and be like, well, at least my day's not as bad as theirs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, instead of turning man. on a documentary yeah. and be like, dang, like that would have helped me have a better day today. Had I yeah. had that perspective or if I would have gone about it differently or, you know, you know what? I'm going to try that next week and see if my relationship with my boss gets better. You know, things yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, Just different perspectives. I'm a big believer in that. I'm a big believer in positive energy. Dude. And pumping it out there as much as you can. And you do, man. Like every time that I talk to you, and I've had a, a rough couple of months because this, this year has been ridiculous for me and my wife. Um, and so I've had some peaks and valleys to climb up and climb down. 
Um, but every time I talk to you, man, you're just, you're this beacon of light for me. And so props to you because you're living that out. Even if you don't see it, I'm telling you right now, you're living that out. You're an example of that. And it does make an impact. It does have a ripple effect when you throw that little pebble out into the pond. It does have a ripple effect and it is making a difference. Yeah, no, thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. You gave yeah. me goosebumps there. Hey, that's what it's all about, right? Making a <laughs> positive impact. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> all right, what else you got for me? Let's dive into some other crazy so, stuff. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you. Obviously, you've had your Bigfoot experiences, which are incredible. Yes. Um, I wanted to talk to you about other cryptids yeah. and experiences. Uh-oh, looks like we lost you, brother. Oh, I've lost you there, sir. Yep. And I'll, oh, there you are. We're back. Oh, I lost you there. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> <laughs> we both froze up at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, Jesse? Jesse? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so you're saying something about other cryptids. Yes. Yes. So have you had experiences with other cryptids or know anybody that's had experiences with other cryptids? Yeah. Um, the one that I have the most experiences with, actually beyond any other, I think the only thing beyond, um, or the only thing I've had more experience with be, would be the uh, the ghost hunting side of things. Um, but I've had ample encounters with what is known as goat man. And I've been wow. lucky to have so many experiences because there's a hot spot for the goat man lore, literally 10 minutes from where I grew up. And wow. it's called the South Twin Lake at Twin Lakes, Iowa. So anyone that hears this in the States, if you're in the Iowa area, South Twin Lake, Twin Lakes, Iowa, it's on an old gravel road. It's called Goatman Hollow. It's crazy. And wow. we, we experienced things that were paranormal, things that were demonic, things that were Sasquatch related, things that were other cryptids related. Um, there's history of cult activity out there. Cause as my brother and I got more and more into these goat man experiences, uh, the County Sheriff is a good friend with my father and he would like, Hey, just, I, I'm aware that your kids are going out there a lot, but just be aware that we're also going out there a lot for very different reasons. And it's to wow. interact and conduct some investigations with this cult activity that's happening out there. Luckily, we never came in contact with any of that stuff. But again, you talk about pumping energy into something. I mean, right there, you basically have the plug in. You just got to put in the extension cord and light it up. Um, but it, it basically started in high school. And a buddy of mine, just in random conversation, was like, yeah, my dad was telling me about Goatman. And I'm like, Goatman? Okay. And he started telling me that along this gravel road was a farm where this guy was alone. He didn't have anybody really in his life. Um, if he had family, they just, you know, weren't close or, you know, invested in his life. And he had a goat farm and his goats were his everything, his life. And he left town for a weekend or some short amount of time. And whether it was arson or accident, the farm burnt down and killed all of these goats. Now, this is a lore that is actually, you can find this lore in a lot of different places. I think Goat Man tends to stay within that same confines of story. Um, but we've actually asked other people around that area, like, is this story legit? Did it happen on this plot of land? And they're like, yeah, it, it actually did. Like, it's not a lie. It's not a made up story. It's not an urban legend. It actually happened here. And so we actually, it was after a football game where our high school, because I went to school in a different town that I lived in. So our high school played the town that I lived in. And after that, we're like, all right, it's Friday night. What are we going to do? And Luke's like, hey, let's, let's go look for Goatman. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so um, we hopped in my, my minivan. My very first vehicle was a minivan. I highly recommend that to you young drivers. Cool. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. You can take all your friends with you wherever you go. Um, so we drive out to this gravel road and it's probably like 9 30, 10 o'clock. And we just stop. I turn the vehicle off. We roll down the windows. It's a nice fall night. And we're just sitting there. I didn't know what to expect. Neither did uh, my buddy Gert, and which you know from CCPI, and mm -hmm. uh, my buddy Luke. 
and we're just sitting there. And all of a sudden, we start hearing the sound of goat hooves walking on the gravel. And I remember turning to them and like, do you hear this? Are you hearing this right now? And it's getting louder and louder and louder. And it's like walking directly up to my van. And dude, we're like, no way. I'm looking in my mirrors. We see nothing. And I'm like, we're out of here. So I turn my, my van on and we just take off. And I call my brother. And still to this day, if you were to ask him about that phone call, we shook that man to his core because he was at, he was at college about three and a half hours away from us. And we are just screaming on the other end of the phone. Oh my gosh. Holy crap. We're talking about the goat hooves, sounds, everything, man. And he's like, holy crap. Like, what? <laughs> and so then we started to um, just start testing out the waters a bit more, trying to build up our bravery. And it started to spread. And all of a sudden it became this huge thing in our high school. Like everyone wanted to go out to go, man. And I do want to retract my statement. My timeline was off. My brother was not in college. Um, he was with other friends. Um, so I, I apologize for the misinformation there. Uh, but um, everyone wanted to go out to go, man. And so we started to do like goat man tours. Like people would get in the van, we'd go out to goat man. And we had, we would go out and we'd hear more footsteps. And it, it would literally sound like someone is walking a goat. So we'd hear the, the, the hooves in the gravel, then we'd hear boot, boot prints in the gravel. And it would be like approaching the, the van. And then we'd go down and we'd turn around, we'd shine our lights down the goat man hollow and there's nothing there. We'd drive back up and we'd stop and we'd hear things again. So we actually did the very first official CCPI investigation at Goatman Hollow. And if I can find the picture, I'll send it to you on Instagram because I was a gangster in high school, dude. And I was straight up wearing a do-rag when, <laughs> when we did our very first CCPI investigation. And I just thought I was the bee's knees, man. And I'm wearing a do-rag calling ghosts out on a gravel road. And uh, so we... Uh, <laughs> We start asking questions and it's really funny because I, I don't remember if it's on a, like a VHS tape or if it's an audio recording or what it was, but within the last couple of years, I actually, it was a video. I saw the video and a buddy of ours who's no longer in our life was like, I don't, I don't know if we should be doing this. And we're like, why do you say that? He's like, I just feel like we're dealing with like demonic things. And we're like, dude, chill out. Like, stop being such a goody two shoes. We're just out here asking questions to thin air. Let it be. And that is when I actually saw what I now believe to be my first demonic being. And there's a correlation with the goat man lore because what I saw was a half human, half goat creature. Wow standing behind a tree it's literally feet from where we would always park the van and hear these sounds and i remember and everyone else for some reason decided oh, sorry, to walk there, mate. sorry there you go something happened there what's that uh oh we're, we're talking paranormal That's things start nice. going crazy oh siri started talking to me what is going Ooh, on there what's she saying interesting question It's gone. That was weird. What happened there, man? Dude, you weren't talking. So that, did I trip your Siri? I don't know. That is really freaky. It just, I was, I was just listening to you and it come on. The Siri, the symbol for Siri come on in the corner and just started talking. I don't know if you can hear it on the recording. I, oh, I heard it. That's weird, man. What's and that just, all about? Just for the record, my phone is right here. There's no Siri. Activated. Yeah. Hey Siri. Now it's activated. Yeah, and it's come, it's come on mine now. <laughs> wow. Okay, so my voice is interacting with your Siri. I didn't even know you could do that. But you didn't call for Siri or anything. No. So. Is there something else I could help? Siri, with? go away, man. We're trying to have a conversation. 
the, that's, my, that is super strange. I'm wondering if I said gone. seriously. That's weird, man. Maybe what? me saying seriously triggered it, but it's not triggering uh, mine. No, that, but it's never happened before. I've never had a. That's never happened. So that's. I didn't even know you could do Siri on this. <laughs> I saw Siri on my phone, but I didn't know I could do it on the laptop. That's crazy, man. Whoa, dude. I don't know, brother. Like, that's weird. I don't know. See, I, 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 I know a lot of coincidences happen in this world, but sometimes I feel like it's just not a coincidence. Yeah. So, I know yeah, Siri is not some crazy thing, but the fact that Siri is voice recognizable. Yeah. It's like it heard something there, man. Yeah. That's, that's weird. That's really that is weird. That's freaked me that out. That is, yeah. Someone walking down the stairs didn't scare me, but that did. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm really glad that my camera can see what's behind me right now. Otherwise, I'd probably be looking over my shoulder being like, am I alone? Am I good? <laughs> nice Christmas tree there. Well. <laughs> yeah. It's not too scary in here, to be honest, but that freaked wow. me out. They gave me goosebumps as well. And dude, think about, think about what I was talking about when that happened. Yeah. It was the yeah. very first demonic being I ever saw. Yeah. Man, and then man. all of a sudden you're like, something's happening over here, dude. Yeah. It, huh. That was weird. Because I'm not talking, yeah. it should, maybe if I called for Siri, but let's see, it's not Siri. I don't know, man. Nothing. It's Nothing's happening when you say that. No. It's really say, weird. hey, Siri. Hey, Siri. Oh, he's there now. He's there. Okay, but you said, hey, Let's Siri. Get rid of him. That's really weird. Right, he's gone. Like, dude, my phone's still not reacting. I said <laughs> the two infamous words to activate it, and yeah. it's still not doing anything on my end. I didn't even know I could do that. <laughs> That's a new thing for me. Wow. That's really wow. strange. That's really huh. strange. What set that off? Yeah. See, that's... No idea. Dude, man. this just got extra special. Let's just be honest. It did. It did. It did. <laughs> I'm hoping Goatman's not in here right now, man. I'm not going to lie. Holy looking crap. around. Holy crap. Jeez. Whoa. Well, we'll see what happens when we start talking conspiracy theories. Yeah. <laughs> That'll get interesting. <laughs> wow. All of a sudden, an FBI so... agent's going to start calling you on yeah. your, your computer screen. <laughs> Will Smith just turns up dressed yeah. as Yeah. Blind, wow, man. okay, well, let's collect ourselves. Let me get us some water yeah. here. Wow. Where, where was we? <laughs> that was really strange. Wow, okay. Um, so, yeah, before uh, Siri interrupted us. Yeah, and he's um, not coming back now, you know, so I don't – it's weird. Well, we're going to keep an eye on that for sure because that was yeah. that was very strange. That was strange. I'm really glad that we were recording that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no yeah. reason for it to do that. Yeah, and like you said, I mean, how many people have you interviewed? A lot of people. A lot of people, and that's never happened. Never. And obviously, you say all sorts of different words that probably sound like that, but no idea what's, no idea. And even that's if it was me up. saying seriously, that's not the first time I've said that tonight. I've no, said, I probably said that happened. like multiple. Yeah, and it's not happened. You just said it again. It's not happened. So, right. That's weird, man. Okay. Anyways. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fan yourself off. Yeah. Collect yourself here. <laughs> that's it. We were so not the, ready. No, no, that's that's <laughs> that shot me, man. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> wow. Yeah, dude, the look on your face. I can't wait to go back and watch that. Like the look on your face was like, what? What is going on? I didn't know. I thought the computer was going crazy or something. I didn't know what was happening. Really weird. That's wow. really weird. It is. Uh, All right, so let's get back on track and we'll see what happens from here on out. Yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, so I see this this creature, this being, and it had long, langy, lang like uh, stringy kind of legs. They were very firm, but just very thin and kind of mal figured. Yeah, but it had a full like goat torso and a goat head with big horns. And this thing literally had its hands around the tree, and it leaned out and it looked at me. And oh, I remember thinking, like, I should not go approach this thing. But I also want to see if this is someone. Like, I don't know who it would have been. Like, no one knew we were going to be out there. But I was like, I have to figure this out. Yeah. And so I, I literally just, like, walked slowly to the tree and just, like, shoved myself around it. Dude, nothing. It was completely wow. gone. 
And wow. you, you look up drawings or depictions of a demonic creature. A lot of times they look like that. They're very goat related. Like yeah. Baphomet, for example, is yeah. goat related. And that's why my opinion on it has changed as I've, you know, educated myself more on the more demonic realm of the spiritual realm. And I, so I went and told the guys, I was like, I literally, I literally just saw a goat man. It's literally half man, half goat. The thing was massive. Um, I was probably like, I don't know, five ten in high school. I probably peaked at like six one, and I probably shrunk a little bit over the years. And it was definitely bigger than me. Wow. Um, so that was probably the craziest thing that we experienced out there. Uh, what, did, what did your friends think when you told them that you'd seen that? What was their uh, reaction? I mean, Seth was like, no way, dude. Are you serious? We went over, checked the tree. There was nothing there. We looked for footprints or, you know, footsteps or movement in the grass of any kind. There was just nothing. And I remember we stopped and we asked questions with an audio recorder, just trying to find something. And it was just yeah. dead silence, man. Just dead silence. But again, at that point, we were so fresh into this. We didn't know what we were doing. We didn't know how much time to invest into something. And we were looking more for the instant gratification. And it didn't like it didn't come back and show itself twice. It's like, okay, well, let's move on. So I, I think we meandered off to a, a cemetery. And wow. um, so, like I said, it started to become this really big thing in our high school to the point where we started to overhear people making plans of going out to go man. Well, being young teenagers, we were like, how can we make their goat man experience something to remember? So we would go park on an adjacent road where we could see people pulling up into goat man. And then what we would do is we would creep up behind their vehicle with our headlights off and then blare the horn, you know, turn the headlights on and just like rush towards them in the vehicle to scare them off. So we were <laughs> waiting on another gravel road to do just that. And we're in my van again. All the doors are locked because when you're doing this kind of stuff, you learn lock your doors. <laughs> and so we're all sitting there and we're literally watching a vehicle driving into Go Man Hollow. So that's what we're focused on. And all of a sudden we hear something like fiddling with the door handle on my big sliding door on my van. And it sounds like it's trying to be opened. And I remember I peeked up in my driver's seat and I looked into my mirror to like look at the ground and there was nothing there. And then all of a sudden this, it grabbed the door handle and was violently trying to open the van door. And I'm literally looking in my mirror at this door and there's nothing there. There's no one underneath the van reaching up and grabbing the handle. There's nothing attached to it being pulled. There's nothing, man. We looked out the windows into the ditch. There was nobody there. But the van door is violently being tried, like tried to be pulled open. Wow. And still to this day, it's probably one of the craziest things I've ever experienced. Because like, it just makes no sense at all. And like, what would have happened if the doors would have been unlocked? That door would have flung wide open and we'd be like, what on earth, dude? Kind of yeah. wish that it would have been unlocked because yeah. like, what would have we seen? What would have we experienced? I, I don't know. But if wow. it was trying to get in that aggressively, what would it have done had it come in contact with us? I just, I don't know, yeah. Yeah. you know? So um, yeah. So anyways, we, we did that for several years and um, it's be obviously at some point it just died out and people stopped going. And, but every time, basically every time we're home, we go back out there just for nostalgia's sake. Yeah. And my brother and I, we drove out there one Christmas break and we just hopped in the car late at night. My parents went to bed. We're like, hey, let's go cruise around for a little bit. Go out to Go Man Hollow. And we drove around this curve to head into Go Man Hollow. And we saw this tall black figure almost one step the entire road, just from one side to the other side. And this is probably a two and a half foot or a two and a half size, like two and a half car size road. It's pretty big. Yeah. And because there's a lot of fishing that happens along there. And so a lot of vehicles pull off of their boats or whatever. And the thing had red eyes 
and it just kind of like turned and looked at us and just kept walking and we like halted the car and at first we didn't know what to think but then as we yeah. kind of revisited that experience over the last years we're pretty convinced that it was probably a sasquatch and as we've thought about some of the stuff that we've heard and experienced we think that it can maybe be related to some of the footsteps and gravel movements and stuff that we'd heard previously as well. And then I just happened to see something crossing through that same dimensional portal that we believe Bigfoot go through. That was this goat man figure, demonic or not. And literally what we saw was him <coughs> jumping from one portal to the next. And it was there and it was gone. And it's just one of those places, man, that you just go out there and you just, you just feel it. And you can't really, you can't put your finger on it. You don't know why you're like, why, why am I feeling something right now? Yeah. Um, but if wow. anybody's interested on my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash it's all me, I T S A L L K N E E. I have a video called, um, creepy and abandoned and it's goat man hollow. And back this previous March, uh, Gert and I actually went and mildly recreated <laughs> what it was like the first time that we experienced Goatman. And then we talk about our Goatman experiences and we actually started to experience some weird paranormal phenomenon while we were out there filming this little really? short video. And it's just, it's one of those places, man, like you just go and it's just waiting for you to plug in your power source yeah. and it lights up. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure there's probably been plenty of people who've driven out there and had zero experiences, but I feel like a lot of the people that we have drawn out there have gone out there and been like, yeah, we felt something, we saw something, we heard something. Um, yeah, it's just one of those places that definitely deserves the attention that it got for a short time because of how active it is and was. Um, we've never actually, that I can think of, after we became much more well fined, well oiled machine as CCP, I don't think we ever went back and did an actual full fledged inve investigation, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, um, it'd be interesting too. Yeah, uh, so I don't know. Like maybe I can find myself being like glad that we never did because it leaves that sense of mystery there. Um, but it also makes you wonder like what you would get. If you yeah. were to go and, you know, do a full flex, like say all night, like you get out there at nine o'clock and you go till four o'clock, you know, something like yeah. that and really yeah. just invest your time. Like, listen, we might be out here and get absolutely nothing, but we might get out here and get some crazy stuff. You, I you just don't know. Yeah. Um, so as far as other cryptid stuff goes, that's probably the craziest. Um, not too far from where I live right now, there's a town called uh, Van Meter and it's super well known for being the town of the Van Meter monster. And literally, and I don't know the, the time frame. I think early 1900s, maybe, maybe more 1920s, 1930s. I can't remember. Um, there was supposedly this creature that was torturing the town to the point where it made front page news on local newspapers. Wow. And it, it is Mothman. And Mothman in the sense of big wingspan and a lantern on its head with this giant light that shines around. But they also said it looked like a pterodactyl. And I mean, we're talking that big of a wingspan. And legend has it that the whole town rallied together to try to rid Van Meter of the Van Meter monster. And there was an old mine near the town or on the outskirts of the town it's kind of within the town now with the with growth of the town but they say that they chased or somehow lured the the monster to this mine and got it inside and then everyone vacated it and blew the shaft of the mine to pieces and trapped it in there wow and so seth actually did a full overnight investigation camping at where this mine is believed to be. And this is the place I mentioned this last time. This is the place where in one night Seth had an insane paranormal experiences. He saw a Sasquatch sighting. 
and had UFO experiences and caught the UFOs on camera. Wow, and man. it's dude, it was like this package just handed to them. Like, here you go, guys. Want everything on a platter? Here you go. It's right there. Wow. And you go out there, man. And I haven't actually investigated it, but we, myself, my wife and Gert, we went out there after um, I spoke at a, a haunted convention and we just decided, let's just go walk out there. It's pitch black. Let's just see if we hear anything, see anything. And we would walk past certain areas of it and you just get this like, whoa, 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 whoa. And you're walking along a railroad track. There's a railroad now right along this area. And it's right along a river too. And it's believed that there's probably limestone in this riverbed, which for anyone who is unaware, limestone tends to be present in a lot of these paranormally charged locations. Um, limestone holds a lot of charge. And a lot of people believe that it feeds energy into these places and causes them to be even more active than you would expect. And so we're like, experiencing this energy and hearing weird sounds and weird shuffling noises and things like that. Um, but uh, I'll have to see, cause Seth that night, Seth and a bunch of other people did a documentary. I'll have to reach out and see if there's a way for me to get my hands on that documentary and send it your way. Yeah. Cause it's crazy, man. Like the, the footage of these UFOs that they got insane. And wow. They didn't get anything of the squatch. My brother, he saw it. Like, he literally saw a Sasquatch running across a cornfield. Like, you can't get much more squatch Iowa than that. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and like That's we said, man, man, like, there's a lot of correlation with Sasquatch activity and UFOs. And that yeah. just blows my mind. As I started to feel or experience that in my research, I'm like, what? Like, the two worlds you never thought would crisscross. They crisscross. Yeah. And I don't know, man. How many people crazy. seem to see lights when they see sasquatch don't they yeah so many people claim to have seen lights some people claim that the sasquatch has turned into a light yeah and stuff like that there's a lot yeah. of that isn't it yeah so i mean again maybe maybe it all it all plays back into the theory of sasquatch being an interdimensional being and that when that portal is open maybe that portal is way bigger than we realize that we can't even see it and so when that portal opens up it's showcasing other spiritual entities in that realm that it's coming from. So yeah, maybe he's walking from a, a dimension when Seth sees it going across that cornfield and he's opening up this portal. And who knows, maybe the portal sh sucks shut super fast or maybe they just gradually close over time. I don't know. That's never been something that I've tried to figure out because I'm. it's just very fresh to me, you know? Yeah. So if anybody listening to this or watching this is familiar with you know, interdimensional portals. And I mean, we're getting pretty comic book here when we start to get down this path. If you're, if you've educated yourself on any of this kind of stuff, please comment below, um, you know, comment anywhere you can so that we can educate ourselves. Cause that's what this is all about is just trying to help 100%. us understand yeah. these things. Yeah. And that's just one thing that still boggles my mind. Yeah. There definitely seems to be a, a connection to portals and, there seems to be something to it. Like you said before, when you saw the goat man and you saw the Sasquatch at the same place, I mean, that could be an area that's got, you know, that's always open or, or something like yeah. that. I don't know, but yeah. Yeah. And it, it's, and I can't, I be paraphrasing here, but I, I believe that they said that someone that was considered themselves more of a sensitive to that kind of stuff came and said, like, there is a portal here at this mine where this mine is, and is most likely a reason why you're experiencing so many things because there's a portal and maybe yeah. it's a portal that doesn't close. I don't know. Again, I, I just don't know that kind of stuff and I'm not going to speak on it because I just don't know. Yeah. You know? Um, Super interesting though, man. It is. It is. Uh, since we're talking about UFOs too, I might as well just branch yep. off and talk about the two UFO experiences that I've had. Yeah. That'd be um, awesome. So I went to school at uh, in a town called Cedar Falls, Iowa. And I lived on the outskirts of town. And I remember I was, I was microwaving something in my kitchen one random afternoon. And I would oftentimes, while I'm waiting for it to cook, I'd be looking. I lived on the third floor. I'd be looking out the street and up in the sky, just whatever. And I remember I was just looking out my window. And 
this like glimmer caught my eye up in the sky. And I was like, oh, it's a plane. So I looked up and I see this little silver saucer just sitting there, just rotating. And I, I thought to myself like, okay, this has to be a plane. It has to be. I've never seen anything just sit in the sky like that, but it has to be a plane. Maybe it's, maybe it's moving so fast that it looks like it's sitting still because the <laughs> sky is so big. So I just kept watching it and it would just slowly move left and it would slowly move right. And it would come back to center and sit there and just kind of rotate again. And I kid you not, man, it went. Wow. And I was like, uh, excuse me. And again, if you haven't heard the first, the, the episode that I spoke on here, the first time episode 12, yep. um, I am not a believer in aliens. My perspective is demonic it's deception and i believe that that's why in today's world the governments of the world are talking more and more and more about alien activity because they're creating the mass deception um because if you come at it from a biblical perspective the realm of Satan, the realm of evil, is always trying to one-up the realm of God, the realm of good. And the more deception that you create, the more questions that you create, especially when it comes to higher powers, per se, the yeah. more people start to go, maybe God isn't the all-seeing, all-time being. Maybe he isn't the force. Maybe he doesn't even exist to begin with. If there are these societies that live on planets that we don't even know about with technology that's far beyond anything we could imagine, how powerful is God really? So I preface that because my perspective is very different. I don't believe in little green men. I don't believe in that kind of interdimensional being, if you will. Yeah. But it, it definitely shook me because I'm like, I literally, I just saw the definition of an unidentified flying object. So I'm fairly certain that this next experience happened after this because I feel like I was sharing this with Gert and Seth. They were my roommates at the time. And I shared that with them. We were talking about it or whatever. But then we ended up going and walking down a road that led to nowhere, which I'm sure is now a, a neighborhood or something. But it was just built and then just left. And it kind of gave us a vantage point of the city of Cedar Falls. So we're just kind of looking out into what would be Cedar Falls. And I remember we all looked up at the, the kind of the center of the sky and we're like, I don't remember radio towers being there. And the, the radio towers here in the U.S., very tall, blink red, so that the planes aren't flying. Maybe they're all the same around the world. I don't know. I don't want to assume. Um, but we're like, I don't remember these radio towers being in the center of Des Moines or in uh, center of Cedar Falls. And the crazy thing about them is they were all red, all very bright, and they created a perfect diamond in the sky. And I'm, we're just all standing there like, and it's so crazy when you can have other people experience things with you because yeah. it's instant yeah. validation. 100%. You go experience something on your own like me. I saw that UFO. You have to put faith in what I'm telling you. If you have more than one person come and say, yeah, I saw it too. You're like, oh, shoot. Like that makes it way more believable. Yeah. So all three of us see this giant diamond, four points in the sky above Cedar Falls. And we're just standing there like, I just, I wonder what that is. And then what we did not expect to happen happened. And all four points just slowly started to separate themselves from each other and go off in their own path and that diamond was no longer a diamond it was four individual red lights spreading out amongst the horizon sky above cedar falls iowa and then they just dimmed out wow and you're like okay i've seen military formations i've seen military helicopters i've seen military planes i know that things happen in weird ways with military However, you hear these crafts, yeah. you know yeah. that they're there, whether they're a mile away or a block away, you can, you hear them. Yeah. Dude, it was silent. 
And the motion and the movement of these, these lights, just like, it was perfect, man. It was perfectly orchestrated. It was like they were on a track and they were just being pulled. And there, I mean, it wasn't a waiver of any kind. It wasn't a way, like nothing, dude, it was perfect. Yeah. And so they're in full control. Yeah, dude. And it, boy, did it cause confusion. And it, it, it's just like, man, it makes you think. It makes you question a lot of things. And I just, I don't know, man. Like, those are the kind of questions that I'm like, man, I just, I just want to know. Like, if we would have had like a, a military grade night vision scope that we could have yeah. looked at, like, what would we have seen? Could we have seen anything? Or would it really have just been a bright ball of light? You know, that's so often what these people see with yeah. UFO experiences, just these bright lights. And you try to look at them, you try to zoom up on them with a camera, and it's just a brighter light. Yeah. And it's like, it's almost like a tunnel of light that you can't see the end of. There's no end or beginning of it. It's just there. And so I don't know, man, like, it's very strange. It's very unique, um, especially for someone who doesn't necessarily believe in the traditional definition of alien. Yeah. Um, but it definitely rocked me for sure, because I was like, okay, like I've experienced that now. So where do we go from here? Yeah. You know, so, what do so you, I know it's a difficult question, but what do you think that is? If it's not, if it's not an alien, you think yeah. it's, what do you think? It could be, but you think it could be um, a, a trick or something to that this is being done pers- uh, on purpose? Yeah. Or is that your thinking? Yeah. Like, again, it, it goes back to what I said, you know, with my preface, like from a biblical perspective, as a Christian, I have to be able to go back to the guidelines that I live my life by, according to my Christian faith, everything has to come back to God, everything. Yeah. And has to come back to creation, has to come back to good or evil, has to come back to truth or deception. And I've waited for years as, a, as, as have so many other people for the government of the governments of the world to acknowledge the sightings that so many people have seen. Yeah, And I've thought, how, if they do that, how can I make sense of it based on my belief system? Just like I had to make sense of Sasquatch, Bigfoot, from my belief system. And that's not to say my belief system is the belief system for you. But from where I come from, it has to be this. Yeah. And so... As you've seen, specifically, I think it was 2020 is when we really, or no, maybe 2000, and maybe earlier than that, within the last seven years, I think roughly, because I, I kind of start, my timeline now starts from where I met my wife. And yeah. they started, the governments of the world started to come out and be like, hey, look at this, this footage from our, our Air Force yeah. flying in the sky and they're following something going crazy speeds. Okay, so then I have to take that and I have to go, Am I going to believe everything I see on TV and on the internet? No. And can we watch a movie on the big screen at the theater and see something just as convincing as what is shown on nightly news without a (laughs) shadow of a doubt? Absolutely. Can people just as normal and casual as you and I with the right training go on a program and create something even more convincing? Yes. Without a doubt. So I'm going, okay, I don't believe anything that I'm seeing on there. Plain and simple. <laughs> I think you yeah. can probably tell that with a lot of the things that I do comment on that you post. Because <laughs> usually <laughs> I come at it from a very skeptical <laughs> point of view. I'm, I'm with just you like, there, man. nah, bro. I just, yeah. hmm. specifically that you. UFO that was falling out of the sky or it looked like it was falling out of the sky. And then there was a military yeah. presence that came over the town. Um, yeah. I just, I'm like, ah. I feel like I can find a way to explain that, but to explain it for a worldwide perspective, it has, from my, from my belief system, it has to be coordinated. There has to be a reason. And 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push your comfort level here a little bit if you don't believe in the Bible. But from my perspective, from what I know to be truth and what I know to be coming in the future based on biblical teachings, there is something known as the rapture, the rapture of the church. The, the book of Revelations talks about the rapture of the bride of Christ. It's when Christ returns, calls his church away from the earth. For a period of seven years, millions of people will vanish in this moment. It will be the snap of a finger. People, millions will vanish. And I believe that the governments of the world are led by demonic powers, demonic beings, demonic leaders, and are like, listen. We know this is coming because the demons, Satan himself, they know scripture. They can quote scripture. They know the stories. They know the ins. They know the outs. They just don't know when it's going to happen. But they know it's going to happen because it's written in God's word that it's going to happen. So they go, listen, we got to start prepping these things for when this inevitably happens. And we have to have a story to draw people away from the truth and deceive them into a false truth. And that false truth is we've been visited finally after all of these years by aliens. And there's been a mass abduction of millions of people around the world. And if you look, look in the history of our newscast for the last five, last 10, last 15 years, maybe 100 years, we've been telling you we think there's a presence here. We think that something is visiting us. We don't know what the purpose is, but we believe that to be the case. Yeah. Gosh, I think it was either last year or the year before some foreign country, some leader of a foreign country said, we believe we have proof of an interdimensional government system. Okay. Show us what you're talking about. Show us what has led you to believe that. You will never see what they are claiming to have, what they're claiming to have proof of. They want to keep us guessing. Yeah. They want to keep us confused. Yeah, confused. They don't want a firm foundation for us to stand on because when we're standing on a firm foundation, dude, we're confident and we cannot be pushed around. Yeah. But if you create a shaky foundation, we have to grab a hold of something to reestablish our balance and they want us to lean into them. To rebalance ourselves. 100%. Yeah. And they don't want us to seek the peace of a higher power. That is God. And that is where my belief being that aliens are not actually alien beings. UFOs are military craft. Why on earth do you think we can't go anywhere near Area 51? And why do you think they blatantly come out and say, oh, no, we don't have alien craft here? Dude, get out of here, okay? Mm -hmm. That Area 51 was one of the things that I really dove headfirst into when I started to get into what is considered conspiracy theory, which is actually just truth that's being hidden behind lies. Area 51, at one point I researched and I found an actual write-up from Area 51 that the President of the United States, without proper clearance, cannot step onto Area 51 boundaries. And if he wow. does, even he or she will be shot down. Wow. Who gives that order? And why can yeah. you not find that right up anywhere anymore? Yeah. It does not exist, dude. I have scoured the internet looking for that. And I know I read that in my high school library. I did not make this up. Wow. It was not a dream. I read it. I yeah. saw it. And it shook me, dude. And it started, 9-11 was the moment that woke me up. I went, something's not right about this. Something is not working with me here. This does not feel right. Yeah. So I started to search for answers. And I started to look into Area 51. And I don't, I think they're being truthful when they say we don't have alien craft here because they are making them there. They're not from another system. They're not from another star field. They're not from a universe where Star Wars exists, Star Trek exists. It's nothing like that. 
dude, if these stories that people talk about and then end up dying after they leave or get fired or relinquish from Area 51 are yeah. true, dude, miles underneath of Area 51. Uh, paddock after paddock after paddock after paddock of crafts, of hidden things that we are not supposed to know, technology that we're not supposed to know about. How do you think we fight against certain things, but we never know we're doing it? Like, this, this is the foundation for me of what an unidentified flying object is is a mass coordinated deception to draw away from the truth and feed into a lie so that when millions of people vanish, they have an excuse. Very interesting, man. Yeah. Very interesting. And my right, my left ear is extremely red, which means I'm really worked up. <laughs> <laughs> is that what happens? <laughs> a bit as well, yeah. Yeah, my That's face gets red, my neck gets red, my ears yeah. get red. When I'm yeah. passionate about something, man, I get, oof. Yeah, no, Temperature it's good, man. starts cooking. It's really good. And I think as well, I think if you look at the definitely the, the, the past three, four years, mm -hmm. you can – I don't know how anyone can not question, at least question, the governments of the world. I, I yes. don't know how anyone can't even – Yes. For me, people that don't want to question it are – and I don't blame them for this. They don't want to. They want to live in their bubble. They don't want to think that there's something else going on. And I get that. I totally yep. get that. Totally. But I think I don't know how anyone can look at, especially the last few years, and say that that's normal. That was right, you know? Yep. Because nah, man, it wasn't. And I think it's it was. Yeah. Yeah. And we we talk about this a lot because I think over the last five years specifically, I think we've noticed a to put it to put it bluntly, a dumbing down of society, um, and I think things like TikTok and this—you know—we can only keep our attention span for ten seconds, and we need something else to stimulate us. Like yeah. these are the things that are dumbing us down, and we go out and about, and we drive amongst the other drivers, and we're asking ourselves, how on earth have you been allowed to be behind the wheel of a vehicle? You're, with the decisions you're making right now, you're putting my life in danger. You can't get your, your face out of the phone. Like, but I often have to remind the people that I'm with, including myself, like in my belief system, there have been things that have been put in place for decades for such a time as this to take our attention away, to dumb us down for lack of a better phrase and to take our attention span away. And the people that have not found a viewpoint to break them away from that. It is not their fault. They are innocent victims here yeah. that just haven't had that experience yet to go, hold on a second. And for us who have had something like for me, nine 11, that was over 20 years ago that that happened 21 years ago this year. <laughs> that was what happened for me before then, dude, I didn't question anything. Everything was exactly as it should have been in my life. Even, even as a kid, like it didn't matter. Like I remember I was the most patriotic person on earth, dude. American flags, every 4th of July. I was like, let's go baby America. And it's not that I'm anti-America or even anti-government. I am anti-establishment, anti-agenda, anti trying to get people to fall in line, to adhere to guidelines that have zero proof behind them. 100%. And sadly, these, these people that, you know, are just kind of going with the flow, they have not had that. And I hate to use this, but they haven't had that experience to wake them up. And I hate using that because woke and all this other car, it's just thrown around willy nilly these days. And it just, yeah. it's just a dirty word at this point, let's be honest. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to offend anybody or turn anybody away from this. Like, we are not condemning anybody here with this conversation. We are saying, listen, this was designed this way. And we yeah. have all fallen, you know, victim to this system at some point. And at some point, something personally within us yeah. caused us to go, hold on a second. I need to understand this a little bit deeper. And then that's when it was like, oh, 
holy crap. And then we start to dig further and further. And, and that further changes further. everything. Because when you exactly. go down that rabbit hole, there's so much. <laughs> exactly. Like I'm a firm believer that every single United States president has been exactly placed in that position at every single point in time until Donald Trump became president. He somehow broke the pattern, which is why there was such an uproar about it. Trump supporter or not, that does not matter. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a person somehow got in and you haven't seen a president being berated by every single person, every government on the planet until he was in office because he wasn't supposed to be here. Hillary Clinton was supposed to be president in the 2016 election, but because of these agendas, because of these conspiracy theories, because of these things that have been happening for decades, yeah, all these things have been put in place. I mean, come on, if Ronald Reagan, an actor can become the one of the greatest presidents in United States history. Yeah. Okay. Why do you need an actor? And when yeah. you have some tragedy that happens across the world, who's the first person to show up there with a camera crew? An actor. Who's the first person to support the next agenda, if you will? The actors. Yeah. Do you see where we're coming from now? It's not about condemning one thing or the other. It's about seeing things the way that they are and not the way that they want you to see them. Yeah. Just like with UFOs and the coverage that you see on TV, they want you to see it a very specific way. Yeah. You need to take a step back, deep breath and go, I see that, but what if we thought about it a different way? And then that is when you really, truly start to break away and understand what truly is possible. Yeah. Not say it, that's what's happening, but you're looking for answers. You're open to possibilities. Your mind becomes open and you go, huh, there is other ways to think about things. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because I don't know about, look, go ahead, buddy. I don't know about you, but I, I don't, well, I agree with everything you're saying here, but I don't always, um, I don't tell people that this is how it is, you know, yep. and, and that's definitely right. I just feel like you as well. We're just open to the possibility that there could be some really foul play here. You know, there could yes. be uh, yes. a, an ulterior motive, you know, and stuff like that. I think we're just open to the, the possibilities. Exactly. And I think that when you start to talk about things as sensitive as the paranormal, as the spiritual realm, like that's why, so often you find these people that talk about paranormal also talk about conspiracy theories. Yeah, they also linked. talk yeah, about they're... the weird things, the comic book things, yeah. because our minds are open to the possibility. 100%. Yeah. And if you're not going to be open to it, you're not going to talk about it because you don't think boring. it's real. <laughs> you know? And every yeah. time I do a lecture at whether it's on camera for a TV show or in front of a crowd of 25 people in Bum hug Iowa. It does not matter. I will always say what you are about to hear is based solely on my experiences and the experiences of those who were with me or around me. What you are about to hear is not a factual thing for me to tell you to believe in. It is only a perspective to give you to create thought processes, to create you to consider the possibility of x y and z yeah, yeah, yeah we're yeah. not experts how can you be an expert on something that's it's unknown you can't be 100 percent. Totally, you yeah. just can't be and that's how i feel with, with the show as well you know that's the sort yes. of we're just putting out there the possibilities and it's up to you whether you believe yes what you're hearing you know exactly man like there's too many experts in today's world too many yeah. there's too the many expert experts gone. Experts yes. gone. when i hear someone say experts say i'm like there's no experts man i think that's very clear especially in the last two or three years there is no experts no experts <laughs> plain right. and simple you can't yeah. be you can't no. be like there are things you can have expertise with but there's always room to grow there's always something more you can learn and there's always an experience that you've never encountered that you're not ready for i don't care what position you're in whether you're a cop 
whether you're an airplane pilot, whether you're a podcaster, whether you're a stay-at-home parent, it does not matter. You cannot be an expert because you can never be fully prepared for every single thing that could happen. 100%. End of conversation. Yeah, 100%, man. Totally agree. Yeah. I could talk, I could talk conspiracy. Order. Not really, I've not really touched too much on a conspiracy on the podcast yet. Yeah. It's something like that, that fascinates me as well. Cause as you say, yeah. it comes in hand in hand with the, with the paranormal. It does, man. It really can't does. Really one the other. Yeah. And maybe we could do it. I mean, I know I, I told you I'd love to be a regular on here. Um, yeah, Cause man. I think you and I share a lot of the same perspectives and we're both yeah. very passionate about sharing these things. Yep. Um, and I think a conspiracy theory focused episode, um, especially in today's world, because you're seeing an uprise of people saying, no, 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 conspiracy, what conspiracy theories have been saying for years is now being proven as truth. It's happening. It's happening. Yeah, yeah. It's literally happening yeah. in today's world. People even are acknowledging things, that. Yeah. Even things that, that, that people said two years ago on social media and stuff, and they were sort of labeled as conspiracy theorists yes what they said two years ago uh, some of it's come true you know so it's yes <laughs> we can see it absolutely man. and they was labeled conspiracy for us two years ago like that's again, a bad again. thing to be open-minded absolutely they again it, it, it goes back to an agenda or a, a deceptive motive because I know the agenda is, a, agenda is a bit of a dirty word in today's world, too. So I get that. I get that people might hear me say agenda. Listen, I'm, for lack of a better term, I'm using agenda. But for a deceptive motive, if they're trying to get you to hear one thing, they don't want you to think or hear another thing. And they're going to put things in place to keep you from doing that. Yeah. which is why you're seeing things being banned on social media. Yeah. And this isn't a right wing thing. This isn't a left wing thing. This isn't a, you know, Democrat versus Republican or, you know, whatever. Like, that's not what this is about. Because guess what? Government on all levels is trash. Exactly. Plain and yeah. simple. Oh, yeah. Trash. 100%. This is an illusion that one's better than the other. One's going to change. They're all going to do what they're going to do. <laughs> yep. Because if it wasn't, how would we all work together so collectively with common things in mind? We're all very different people. Like the United States and the UK, we're very similar in a lot of ways because our root system is based from you guys. Yeah. However, yeah. you go to the UK or you come to the United States, you're going to have very different experiences. It's yeah. just the truth. Yeah. You go to Asia, very different. Yeah. You know, yeah. like... I, my lineage is Norwegian. If I go to Norway, Norway is very similar to the United States in a lot of ways, but it's going to be a very different experience. But yet we, we all work so similarly governmentally. It's because for years when this governmental idea came in play, it's mm -hmm. like, all right, how can we, how can we spread this out? You know, and a lot of people will re refute that argument. Well, it's been put in place for a reason. We get that. Just like stoplights are put in place for a reason. It's for safety. It's to keep us from running into each other all the time. I get that. And I think that there are great things that come from government. Rules need to have a place in our world. Yeah. If there are no rules, Purge. our world is hell <laughs> at yeah. all times. Yep. Yeah. Please don't take that as that. That's what we're saying. But what I believe to be ex has been exposed for years now, like these are the things that we are talking about as trash and that these are things that are actors on a TV screen telling you, oh, we'll be OK. Everything's fine. Don't worry about this. Just like in 9-11, when World Trade Center 7 fell and it was never hit by an airplane, it was never hit by debris. And it came down in a controlled demolition. And it was reported as fallen an hour before it actually fell. Come on. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. is what we're talking about. It's in, it's literally in our face. And they laugh at us because it's in our face. And we're all going, oh, mm. well, that's crazy. That's really yeah. crazy. I didn't know about that. I wonder what hit it. And then we go, 
oh, it's time for supper, time to go eat some food, and we just forget about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, 100%. oh, people are either going to hate this part of the conversation <laughs> well, or going to love it. <laughs> it is what it is. We're just being honest. That's, that's right. Absolutely. That's you you know, not everyone's going to like your thought process, but that's life. That's okay, man. Someone but, might get offended. You know what? It's good for you. It is good. Yes. <laughs> and it I don't know about you as well. My, my opinion could change daily. I mean, yes. Yes. I'm not yes. someone who's going to say that's red and tomorrow it's red. You know, yep. I, I, if it's blue tomorrow, it's blue. I know that doesn't really make sense. <laughs> I can I, change my opinion from day to day. Yeah, I'm not dude. always, I'm not right. I'm never, I never would say I'm always right, but no. I'm, I'm agreeing with a lot of what you're saying here, brother. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, I think there's certain things that you can count on, <laughs> but you can, again, it goes back to the expert thing. You can never be fully prepared. And just like whether it's an experience that you are having or an experience that you had, I, you and I could be talking about two very similar things. And I'd be like, holy crap, dude, like the way you explain your experience is very like you and I had very similar experiences, but the way you explained it, I never thought about that before. And now my mind has unlocked yeah. a whole new level. Yeah. And that's what we're like. You just you to go day to day and be like, oh, yeah tomorrow I, or I go to sleep tonight. I wake up, I go to work, I come home, I eat, I go back to sleep and do it all over again. Yeah. Guarantee you every minute of tomorrow is not going to be exactly like today. And it 100%. never will be. Yeah. That's not Ever. It yeah. hundred percent, man. Yeah. Super interesting stuff. Yeah. We do. We've been talking for like two hours and 15 minutes. Oh, well, I don't know how long we've been recording. Them. I'm not sure. It doesn't tell you. It doesn't tell you. But this this has been awesome. Can we can we touch on CERN now? Yes, we're, now yes, we're down at yes, right. dude. I am I am all yours. If this is a three and a half let's, hour long podcast, I'm cool, bro. Let's go for it, brother. <laughs> we started. Yes, now. let's talk about CERN. The ears are red. We're ready. Yes, they are. <laughs> I think mine are as well. Yes. We both got angry then. <laughs> the I love it, dude. <laughs> I love it. Your ears and your hair. It's all red. Everything's red. Yeah, the beard. It's all gone red. <laughs> So I posted a video on Facebook uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and it was, I don't know, I, again, I post stuff on Facebook that I think looks cool. I'm not saying it's definitely real. It just looked, right. to me, it looked cool, and I like sharing stuff that I think looks cool, like if yep. it's to do with this subject, and that's why I shared it. And it was basically, um, where was it taken? It, was, it might have been in Switzerland, mm -hmm. where CERN is based. I believe. And there's a picture yes. of like a black opening in the sky. Yes. And I don't know if it's a real video or not. I don't know, but it was very interesting. Yep. And I shared it and you commented. You, you, you it popped me. <laughs> yeah. I got you. you I got go. the ears red. I got the ears red. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and uh, we spoke, you, you spoke about, and I was like, when I, when I next speak to you on the podcast, I need to ask you and let's talk about CERN because I know a yeah. little bit about CERN. Yeah. I know what they, I know what they, well, I say I know what they do. I don't, but I know you might be able to explain what CERN is better than me. Yeah. So basically, as it says, just so if you're unfamiliar with CERN, I'm going to read what it's labeled as on Google. It's a European organization for nuclear research and it's an inter intergovernmental organization. So coming right off of our conversation, we're talking intergovernmental. That means governmental combination, okay? So that means collaboration of governments to put in the most layman terms I can. Governments working together for the same cause. Nuclear research. And CERN operates the largest particle physics laboratory in the entire world, okay? It was established in 1954, and it is in a suburb of Geneva in Switzerland, which is along the France-Switzerland border. So um, my experience with CERN I used to research a lot, and this is before the internet wiped away conspiracy theory research. 
This is before YouTube did away with any video that was considered conspiracy theory. You go on YouTube now, you just can't find that stuff. And it used to be a bubbling pot of research choices that other incredible creators have done tons of research to showcase these topics. It just doesn't exist anymore. Maybe on a platform like Rumble. Um, I haven't really looked on there, if I'm being honest. But um, it, it deals with particles and it deals with dimensions and it deals with interdimensional study. Now, these are the things that are not talked about in the official definition. Yeah. Things that happen behind the doors of CERN are believed to have altered the world around us. And again, we're going to get into some comic book stuff here, kids. So bear with us. Hang tight. We're talking, we all at this point, at least, especially like, and if we're not aware of it, once we talk about it, we become aware of it. Like, oh, holy crap, I didn't even think about that. Mm-hmm. It's In today's world, it's called the Mandela effect. Yeah. And the Mandela effect, to put it as plain and blunt and quick as possible, is we remember things that apparently do not exist. Yeah. Or we remember things that do exist, but they're in a very different state. For example, one of the biggest, most prominent Mandela effects out there is a movie known as Shazam. And Shazam is a movie about a genie played by the actor, the 90s actor Sinbad. And there's also a movie called Kazam. And there's a genie played by Shaquille O'Neal, the NBA basketball player. Now, Kids from the 90s, myself included, my wife, Tommy, I don't know. Are you familiar? I'm trying to think. I don't think so. No. Okay. So a lot of the kids that grew up in the 90s or were born in the 90s and grew up into the later 90s, we saw this film. And it was not a theater film. I remember it being a TV film, like a Disney Channel film or something like that. Yeah. And I remember when Kazam came out, I was like, dang, this feels like a complete ripoff of Shazam. And it's Shaquille O'Neal. So they're trying to use, because he was huge in basketball in the 90s, just massive. And they're trying to use his stardom to take their idea, what they think is their idea, and make this a Hollywood blockbuster. But all of us OGs were like, nah. I'm sticking with Shazam because Sinbad killed it. It was hilarious. It was great. It was well done. Yep. According to today's world, Shazam never existed. Sinbad never played a genie. And it's funny because it became such a big topic of discussion that there's a creator uh, here in the United States. And maybe I'm sure it's on, since it's on YouTube, everybody can see it. But it's called Funny or Die. And they've uh, done a lot of just like skits and parodies and things like that. Done a lot of work with like Weird Al Yankovic and Will Ferrell and, you know, things like that. That it became such a big thing that Funny or Die actually made like a short about Shazam because it never happened. And Sinbad himself has actually come out and been like, I never did this movie. I was never part of any kind of a production like this. Yeah. But I do. You, you can remember. talk to thousands and then probably millions, if not millions, yeah. hundreds of thousands of people yeah, who remember watching this film. My wife remembers a very specific scene, and I can't remember exactly what it was, but I remember it revolves, I think, around a school bus with a, a girl and a boy actor in it. And we all have very specific memories. I can see a still from the movie in my head because I remember pausing it. I literally remember pausing this film and according to the world, according to the internet, according to the existence of time, it does not exist. And a lot of people believe that there was a particle combustion or some kind of a breakdown that happened in CERN that went kaboom and wiped a, a common memory, a common existence from our plane of existence and i mean there's so many other things like the berenstein bears how it was spelled with an e-i-n instead of an a-i-n 
Um, yeah. How Febreze is spelled F E F E B R E Z E, but people remember it being spelled F E B R E E Z E. Yeah. Um, the Britney Spears friend. dress. I'm sorry. The Britney Spears dress in Hit Me Baby yep. One More Time. Yep. That's what I've recently come out that people yep. have been saying. Seriously, if you're not familiar with this, get on Google and yeah, just type in so Mandela cool. effects. Yeah, I'll actually pull it up right now. There's a, there's a Star Wars one as well, isn't there? When he says, Luke, I'm your father. Yes, that, exactly. And that everyone remembers that. You know yes. what I mean? It's, and uh, you- Apollo 13, Tom Hanks says, Houston, <laughs> we have a problem. Apparently, he, that's not what he says. Really? But that's what we all quote him. Wow. Yeah. Here, let me see. I'll, I'll do Apollo 13. Apollo 13. Super so what exactly is, let's see, uh, Houston, we have a problem. Um, That's crazy. And it says, the real quote is, yeah. Houston, we've had a problem. No. Yes. No way. <laughs> but this person claims that they just rewatched it twice, and yeah. he says, we have a problem. So there are still people that claim, because I've heard it. I've heard that. I was like, that's not what I remember. Yeah, yeah. And I watched it and it was different. And yeah. there's other people who say, no, I watched it and it's still the same. So like, yeah. explain weird, this to me. It just, it doesn't make sense, man. It does yeah. not make sense. It really doesn't. Unless and, it's just put there to confuse us and to mess us up even more. <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> and I will say, I will admit that for those of us who do question things, whether it be governmental or the, those of us who to subscribe to some, some, some conspiracy theories, it is easier for us to look at these and go, huh, this is very strange. Instead of just yeah. being like, ah, we're all crazy. We just remember things that didn't exist, like whatever. Like, no, we like to question things. We try to understand things. Um, I saw a video a few years back before, again, the internet was wiped of these conspiracy theory things. And I remember the wipe just was like, one day everything was gone. Yeah, and yeah. again, if they're not real, why are we getting rid of them? But a lot of people 100%. say, well, it's because it's misinformation. It's false yeah. truths and this and that. But it's like they pick and choose what's misinformation. So exactly. you, can watch your, you can watch your video on Flat Earth. They don't, I mean, I'm not saying Flat Earth, so I, say, I don't know. But you can watch a video on Flat Earth. That seems to be accepted because... Yep. Generally, you're seen as crazy if you believe in flat earth. Like, yes, generally, like, I'm not saying you are because I don't know, but right, that so that's let go. So, we're allowed to watch stuff like that, but then something else is taken off. Yep, so, and then generally, the things that are taken off are the things that people have a collective agreement on, you know. Yeah. We don't we don't talk about certain elements of the 9 11 story because you will get blacklisted you will get banned you will get deleted you will get whatever you know what i'm saying yeah yeah, yeah. um you don't talk about certain things about um royalty or presidential reigns or things like that because you there's just those are we just don't talk about those yeah Yeah. like i mean if we really want to start spiraling you talk about queen elizabeth there's a massive conspiracy that she is reptilian yeah and a lot of people say that when they encountered her, her eyes would blink sideways and she would change tone. She had gnashing teeth. Like you're not allowed to think these things. And again, yeah. we're talking the, who's controlling the narratives here. And if um, there's nothing to it, like, what's the problem? Right. <laughs> you know? Who cares? Yeah. You know, like, day, just like so many people get offended by like just the most innocent of jokes. It's like, if it's so, if you're so offended by it, all you have to do is get up and walk out the room. Like, exactly. listen, if someone starts deeply insulting my Christian faith, I'm going to say, hey, listen, I don't need to hear this. I don't hmm. have time or space for this in my life. If you don't agree with me, that's cool. I'm going to go ahead and leave this conversation. Yeah. It's that easy. Yeah. You know, it's really that easy. But there's mass amounts of information that have been taken from the internet and just wiped away, including this video that I saw. And again, take it for what you will. I'm not saying I believe everything that's on the internet, but it was very, very intriguing. There is um, a courtyard on the property of CERN. And it might look different now. I don't know. Uh, But there was some sort of like, 
I can't remember if it was like a statue or a globe. Um, there was some sort of a structure in the center of it. And this person is walking through an office building at CERN. And you can clearly tell it's being recorded on a cell phone because it's very shaky. And yeah. as all of these videos are, I mean, you take a picture of Sasquatch, it's going to be blurry. Um, plain and simple. Yeah. And <laughs> it, it walks up to a window. And now granted that the office building is completely dark but there's like, you know, exit signs. And so there's a little bit of like a red hue or a green hue, depending on where they're at in the, in the building. They approach a cubicle and they just slowly put their phone up and start filming out the window. And there is a, like a parade of people in cloaks marching to the courtyard. And they literally have a female bound and being carried to the center of this courtyard wow. and they set her down and this one person in more of like an elaborate uh gown or cloak if you will walks up and they're clearly standing over her and speaking to her about things obviously you can't hear it because you're there inside of an office building and filming them outside the office building yeah and there's a flame burning and this person literally unsheaths either a dagger or a knife or some sort of a cutting tool. And this, this bound female is not in a good way. And they literally go and they start to cut her open oh, in like man. a human sacrifice kind of way. Yeah. Yeah. And now I'm not saying I've seen a bunch of human sacrifices, but one can safely assume that when someone's getting cut open with a bunch of people around with cloaks and fire, yeah. there's some sort of a ceremony going on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And this oh, kind of human sacrifice, children's sacrifice, things like this is very common in yeah. governmental practices around the globe. Something, something else you're not allowed to talk about. Exactly. You want to talk about something to get you blacklisted fast. Yeah. 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 And this video, it, it films for a while and you can tell that they, and, and I think this is where a lot of people are going to question the video because that's where it stops. You can tell that they're clearly bothered by this and probably thinking like, holy crap, if they're going to do this to this, what if I get caught? You know? And so they, you see them, they're clearly running out of the cubicle area and down the hall and the phone turns off. Yeah. Um, these are the kind of things that are taking place in places like CERN. They are masked as we do this, but they're doing completely different things. Yeah. And I just recently read an article that stated that the ultimate energy source has been obtained and we will no longer have to worry about batteries or plugging things in the way that we traditionally know them because this source has now been figured out to where it'll be able to be given cheap, effectively, and to everybody. Listen, okay? We live in a world where they want us to believe they have our better life in mind and that they're truly considering our best at all times. Yeah. If you believe that, I'm not going to tell you that you're wrong. All I'm going to say is that I disagree. And I can guarantee you, if that is what's happening, if a place like CERN is creating an energy source that is sustainable, it's so that it can be controlled. Nobody beyond maybe the beginning stages of something like this is going to get it cheap and going to maintain that cheap level of existence throughout the entirety of its existence. That's called bait. And they will grab you. They will suck you in. And now everything that you own is connected to that and they can turn it off or control it at any 100%. given moment, which 100%. is why you are seeing a push around the entire globe for electric vehicles. Yeah. 100%. So that they can be controlled and turned off at any given moment. 100%. Why do you think in 2020, <coughs> car lots 
were completely vacant because there was vehicles that were being reconfigured with new microchips to give more control when they finally are given to customers. These vehicles are literally driving weapons, okay? Literally. And, yeah. and if you want to go, if you want to get away from that idea, let me give you this other perspective. We live in a world where, yes, nuclear war is discussed, but what isn't discussed is electrical war. Coming from EMPs, one EMP blast over a country like the United States that I live in will knock our entire existence back to the caveman era. We will have nothing because everything depends on the grid. And now your vehicles depend on the grid. Now you can't go anywhere. Now you're stuck where you're at. Now your smart lights will not turn on. Now your smart locks will not lock. Do you see this? What this yeah. trend is? Now our smartphones will not work because everything that we have is connected to this. 100%. And the second they get more and more and more and more and more control, why do you think we're moving to the electronic age in a much faster pace? Yeah. Because they don't want us to flourish beyond the boundaries that they're trying to contain us in. It's 100%. as simple as that. And these are the things that are happening at CERN. What can we create here? To one, I truly believe that they're opening portals because obviously we're believers in portals. Yeah. We're believers in interdimensional existence. I think that, again, you're looking at the interdimensional aspect of CERN. I think that this is helping to open those doors for the interdimensional beings who I believe several work hand in hand with these governmental existences to push these agendas, to work side by side to calculate every little thing that is going on. And a lot of people believe that the Mandela effect happened in 2012 when the Mayan calendar said the world was going to end. Everyone thought, oh, here we, they even made a movie about 2012. Yeah. It was crazy. The, literally yeah. the whole world just imploded basically. Yeah. And yeah. like I watch horror movies and I don't really get bothered, but I remember like being physically ill watching 2012 because it was like, if yeah. this is something that could happen, like, man, watching all of these people die like this is insane. Yeah. And a lot of people claim that after 2012, that's when the Mandela effects took effect. Yeah. And it's named Mandela effect because of um, how I'm hit the actual full name. Let's see. Let me look it up. Can you can you help me, Tommy? Mandela. 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 Oh no! Yeah, where is it? <clears throat> it definitely seems like there was a a switch at some point where yes. just everything went crazy. Yes. It definitely feels like that. There, there was that because it just and it just seems to be getting crazier. To be honest, it doesn't seem to be. Yes, uh, Nelson Mandela. Yep. Nelson Mandela. This is where it started. People thought that this man died many many years ago and they they come to find out i'm trying to find when he died come to find out he died december 5th 2013 people thought he died in like the 60s 70s 80s something like that something crazy maybe the 90s but when they found out he was alive they're like no 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 i remember seeing news about him dying yeah, yeah, but he was still alive. Yeah, <clears throat> and it, like that's why it's called the Mandela effect because people are like, no, that is not what happened. That is not what I remember. You know, like here's a couple other ones just from the quick search. Um, people remember Curious George, the monkey, with the guy in the yellow hat too. They remember yeah. him with a tail, but he doesn't have a tail. Really? Yes. Um. Another one. Let's see. I can find another one here. Um, okay. Do, when I say Jiffy peanut butter, does that stand out to you? Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe to the audience it will, but I'm not okay, sure. Okay. It might be a U.S. A US thing. Um, apparently, 
Jiffy. I remember Jiffy peanut butter growing up. It was Jiffy. It was Skippy. Yeah. And um, Jiffy was always one of the top brands that everyone's like, oh, I got to have the best peanut butter. It's apparently it's never been called Jiffy. It's called Jif. Just Jif. J-I-F. And people are like, oh, if you remember it being Jiffy, it's because you remember Skippy. It's like, no, that's not yeah. what happened. No. At all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now, no. Looney Tunes. Do you, is it, is it spelled T-O-O-N-S or T-U-N-E-S? Oh. Oh, man, it's a tough question. I'm trying to think how I'm seeing it. When you first said it, it sounded like, I'm going T-O-O. T-O-O-N-S? Yeah. They say it's always been T-U-N-E-S. Really? Yes. See, I'm seeing it. Yeah, man. And a lot of people say it's called, it's spelled that way because it's known as Merry Melodies. There's always been an emphasis on music with that cartoon or with that cartoon series, which is why it's known as tunes instead of like cartoons. Okay. But people remember T-O-O-N-S because yeah. it was Looney Cartoons. Yeah. When you first said yeah. it, I could see it in my head as that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, and some of these things are such small things, but... Yes, Exactly. Like, time, yeah. like every action that we make does change everything anyway. If you got yeah. so oh man. So there's a TV show called um Sex in the City. Yep. Um, but it's actually <laughs> called Sex and the City. But there's literally a picture of a perfume made with the branding of the show, and it's sex in the city. I've always thought it was Sex in the City. Yeah, but it's not. I'm sure it's Sex in the City. It's Sex and the City. What? Thank you, Mandela Effect. Yeah, man, it's strange. And there's yeah. so many as well. Do you guys have Oscar Mayer hot dogs? Um, um, possibly. I'm not sure. Okay. I'm terrible okay. with names of things anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, what about Skechers? Just like tel- uh, tennis shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It, is it spelled S K E T C H E R S, or is there no T and it's just S K E C H E R S? I would say the first one. The first one you no. Nope. Wow, man. But that's what everyone remembers. Yeah. Sketchers. It's, so... it's like a sketch. You don't yeah. spell sketch without the T, but for yeah. Skechers shoes, no T. So strange, man. Fruit Loops. Is fruit spelled like fruit or is it spelled F-R-O-O-T? I would say it's spelled like fruit. Nope. Oh, man. F-R-O-O-T-L-O-O-P-S. Fruit Loops. We all know it was fruit. It was actual fruit loops. It's crazy, man. Now, one of the other, the funny ones, the one that gets like memed a lot. (laughs) Is yeah. tricks trick cereal, and the slogan is tricks are for kids, and it's crazy because I ate trick cereal a lot as a kid, and they were always shaped like the fruits that they were flavored after, bananas, yeah. grapes, whatever. When we got to a certain age, apparently, they turned into just colored balls of cereal, like kicks or you know something like that. <laughs> yeah. And they say that they've always been that way. Really? And I saw oh, Siri's that. come back. Sorry, sir. Siri's back? Siri came back. Oh. While we're talking Mandela effect. Right, what did Siri, I say? Siri, you need to go. We're talking. Okay. We're talk- I found this on the web. We're talking me. about CERN, mate. <laughs> Siri got involved again. What I tell um, you, man. I said when we start talking conspiracy theory, that FBI agent FBI agent's gonna start popping up yeah. on Yeah. See, that does frighten me as well. (laughs) Maybe it's MI6 agent for you guys. Yay. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, man, the the Fruit Loops shape, man. It used to be, it was fruit. They shaved as fruits when I was a kid. Then they turned into colored fruit balls. Yeah. My wife and I found them the other day, and they're back to being shaped like fruit. But we were told they were never fruit to begin with. So why would they all of a sudden be fruit shaped again, which is they look exactly like they used to. But they yeah. were told they never were shaped like fruit. Oh, it's so weird, man. I don't know, man. It's crazy. I don't know. 
And there's so many of these things, and we can so all many. we can all find one and yep. loads. We can find yep. loads. Yep. Oh, Again, man. all this to say, question everything. There's yeah. nothing wrong with questioning everything. I literally yeah. question everything this man posts on social media. Yeah. Hundred percent. I would. <laughs> yeah. Like hundred percent. I'll look to. at it and be like, nah. Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. But then there's other things I'm like, you know what? Like this actually made me think. Like that that UFO mm-hmm. video with the craft seemingly falling out of yeah. the sky. Like yeah. it actually got me turning. Yeah. And I started thinking, I was like, all right, how, how can I figure this out? You know, just yeah. based on things that I've seen and heard and you know, whatever. Um, it's good for our brains. Yeah. That's what I like when I put something out as well. I like it when people sort of have an opinion on it and maybe say, no, that's, you know, that's not real or, you know, or that is real. You know, that's what it's all about. It's about opinion. I like that. It creates a conversation about it. It does. It does, man. And that's really, as long as we've been talking, like that's what the, the foundation of this entire conversation is about to just get people talking, just get people thinking. Yeah. Just be open. You don't have to believe anything the same way we do. We're not asking that of you. We're not suggesting that of you. We are simply stating be open because we're Uh open to your thought process. We really are. Yeah. And like, if we had 14 other random strangers join us right now, I'd say, give me your thoughts on this. And then I go, okay, yeah, that's cool. I totally understand where you're coming from. I don't agree. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. But you can see the point. Yeah. 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 That's all. I think that's the best way to be open-minded. Yeah. And, you know, because anything is possible. <laughs> exactly, man. It really is. And I think when you can start understanding the fact that we do really live in much more of a comic book existence than people want to acknowledge, I think you're going to start to understand a lot of the things that happen in this world. No matter where you live, truly, no matter where. 100%. You yeah. know, and it's not to say that everything is bad because it's not. There's a lot of great things in this life that we live 100 percent, man you know like the gift of life like the fact that i'm i'm getting ready to welcome my first son like yeah, the amazing. fact that i live in an existence where i can do that with my wife like that's amazing yeah you know yeah, man yeah like i don't know man like it's just it's just good to be able to sit and create a platform to talk about this stuff because i know like podcast i think is like really the where we exist now you yeah. know um the ones that go beyond the boundary line um yeah. because podcast realm is really where people just let loose and there's yeah. no filter it's there's open. no boundaries yeah you know it's and open it truly the freedom to speak how you believe exists in podcasts and because i'll be i'll be interested to see if there's anything that we say that I get flagged about on YouTube. You know, I'd be very interested. I think we've Um, hit on a few subjects that may (laughs) may cause a few flags. Yeah, I might get a couple flags just because they have things that go through and they check every word that is spoken on these videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I've I've, I've interviewed guests in the past that have said, I've gone to say a certain word and I've gone, I won't say that because that could get you in trouble. So I could be in trouble now. (laughs) Yeah, well... I mean, we well, know Siri's listening. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. Siri's definitely here. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, again, man. again, if this was deleted, yep. it sort of proves our point. Exactly. So exactly, and, and if for some reason, when this gets up on my YouTube, whether it's up for a decent amount of time and a short amount of time, it's up up there for a year, and then all of a sudden it gets flagged. Like mm. I will make a video. If this thing gets taken down, I will make a video with very specific verbiage to make sure that it stays up and we will talk about it. And obviously I'll let Tommy know. And then him and I will talk about it. Yeah. Um, because this, this kind of stuff that gets taken down, it just further proves that they don't want us talking about it. And if they don't want us talking about it, there's probably a reason for that. And 100%. again, it just goes back to keeping your mind open to the possibility of anything. 100%, man. So, 
Yeah, see, this, this has been awesome, brother. I don't know. Yeah, how long it really has. I think we got we got red ears and everything, brother. We got red ears. <laughs> I got red cheeks. <laughs> I think we're on what we on over three and a half hours, maybe. It might be longer. I don't know. Let's see. Like, we're we're just coming up on three hours from when we first started talking. Wow. And then probably, you know, about another 15 minutes before we started recording. So we're really close to that three hour mark. Wow, man. Well, if you're still with us, we hope you've enjoyed it. <laughs> yes. Hopefully this made your work day go faster or your road trip go faster. Hopefully this opened up some questions for you to talk about. Even if you're listening to this by yourself, like share this with other people that you think would be interested in these topics. Even if it's just like the latter part of our conversation or the middle of it, like say, hey, skip to, you know, 2514 and hear what they're listening to or what they're talking to. Um, like, that's great because you might not be into everything that we're talking about because we covered a wide range of topics yeah. today. Yeah. And that's what's so great about this because the way that this man has branded this podcast leaves doors wide open to talk about anything yeah that's what there's a lot of creepy in the world that we live in yeah 100 yeah. percent. <laughs> yeah like siri listening in on our conversation that's yeah, crazy siri was getting involved <laughs> yeah jesse this has been awesome brother it has man it's been Can an honor you... once again yeah man it's an honor it's an honor to be on your platform as well that really is an honor yes so thank you so much sir can you hey. tell the audience where they can find you yes uh, you can find me more specifically, or excuse me, prominently, more prominently on my YouTube channel. It is youtube.com forward slash it's all me, I T S A L L K N E E. Um, I have all sorts of content on there. Um, so check it out. I think there's something on there, at least for, for everybody. You'll be able to find at least one thing that you'll enjoy. Um, you can find me on Instagram, that is it's underscore all me. Um, I got some really cool things in the works for 2023. I'll be making a second channel. Um, as if, if you came in at the beginning and you're still here, you heard the, the little bit of a burping content co uh, conversation. Uh, that's something that I'm pretty well known for uh, in the world of YouTube is my burping content. Um, that is going to be going to an exclusive channel. Um, and we talked about that. Actually, I broke the news of that on episode 12 here with Tommy. And we're getting closer. Once we hit that uh, thousand subscriber mark on my original channel, It's All Me, that uh, burping content channel will open its floodgates for the world to see. So getting excited, putting that all together. Um, if you're interested in any of our paranormal documentaries that we've made, if you go to youtube.com forward slash CCPITV, you can find Squatch Iowa on there for free. You can find Haunted Iowa on there for free. Um, my mini documentary called Searching for Sasquatch is on there for free. That's also on my own personal YouTube channel. Um, we have tons of other paranormal stuff on there going all the way back to the beginning of our paranormal adventure starting in the mid 2000s. Um, just tons and tons of content on there all for free. So yeah, anything that uh, you guys are looking for, there's plenty of opportunity for you to check it out on there. Also, if you enjoy this kind of content, you know, let uh, let Tommy know in the in his comment section. Let me know in my comment section. I know there's a lot of people that like some of that creepy, darker content, some of the more paranormal stuff. If you like this kind of podcast format, um, since we are doing a collab here on my channel as well with his podcast, uh, let us know. You know, if this is something, if you want to hear us talk about a specific topic more, like if you want like a two hour long podcast just about conspiracy. You know, or just about my experiences at Villisca or at Ferrar, you know, whatever. Um, if you want me to interview Tommy and ask him all the questions, <laughs> you know, let us know. These are the cool. Yeah, that's why it's so great to have a platform like this because we get to get um, ideas and thoughts from the listeners and the viewers um, because that's why we're doing this. We want to give this out to you, and so your thoughts and opinions mean a lot to us. So yeah, that, I think that pretty much sums up how you can find me on the old interwebs of the internet. Um, I'm not hard to find. I'm on Twitter. I don't really use it a whole lot. I think I said that last time too. Um, but yeah, we have fun. We have fun. And it's all about enjoyment, creating a community where people can come and escape from the harsh reality of the existence we live in sometimes. 
and just having fun, you know, and separate themselves from it. And uh, I just want to plug to Tommy. Like I said, he's, he's an awesome creator. Um, he's doing some great stuff with his family. Um, all his stuff that he has on Instagram, I'm not even going to try to name all his handles on Instagram. He's got like three <laughs> accounts. Yeah. I got God bless ones. this man. <laughs> <laughs> this man does God. hard work on on the internet and he deserves all the recognition in the world uh, thank, you, sir. thank you very much man yes i think that i think i i think i covered it all if not i think tommy's pretty good at summing things up in his posts about the stuff too so all the links and everything will be in the description 100 so. percent definitely and merry God. christmas to everybody happy new year that's what i celebrate i celebrate merry christmas but uh, if you celebrate you know hanukkah just started last night so happy hanukkah to everybody um, happy Kwanzaa. Um, if you don't celebrate the holidays, hopefully you at least enjoy the sights and the sounds and the, the happiness that comes along with these things. Um, it's all about love, man. It's all about love and putting smiles on people's faces. 100%, brother. 100%. Yes. Jesse, thank you so much, man. This has been awesome. And I know it's not the last time. No. We're going to be talking, that's for sure. Absolutely We've not. got a lot more of this coming. Yeah. And, uh, a lot more conspiracy. And, and everything. I want it all. I love it. Yes. All. Hopefully you guys aren't annoyed by my voice because you're going to hear it a lot on this channel. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Man. 100%. <laughs> thank you I so mean, much. Thank you, buddy. buddy. Thank you, you know, for doing this collab video with me. Um, I really am excited thank to you, share your honor. passion, your creativity on my channel um, and give you, you know, another platform and hopefully drive some more people to, to the things that you're passionately creating. So Thank, Thank you, you so much, brother. It's an honor to be on your channel. As yes. I said, I've been I've been watching you for a long time. That sounds a bit weird, but uh, <laughs> hey, no, that's that's cool, man. Like that's amazing so to be on your channel. That's yeah, I love it, awesome. man. It's an honor. It truly is. It's an honor for me, and it's an honor for you. Um, I'm honored and blessed to know you. It's been really awesome getting to connect with you these last several months. Um, yeah. I think there's a bright future for both of us ahead, working to, together and separately. Um, when you put two creative people together, it's kind of hard to keep them down. Fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> awesome stuff, brother. Yes. All and right, I wish you good. all the luck with the new baby and everything you, that's sir. coming your way. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks, brother. I appreciate that. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Video's not done yet, kids. Video's not done yet. Listen, listen. I just dropped a brand new It's All Me merch. And I need to make sure you guys check out the description below for all the details. There's a link. Grab your merch. We got hoodies. We got t-shirts. We got tank tops. We got stickers. There's hats. All sorts of stuff. New designs are going to be coming throughout the upcoming months. So I want to make sure you guys check that out. It's All Me merch. Available now. Don't miss it, kids. It's a great way to support me and my channel and upcoming content. So make sure you hit that description down below. Check out that comment section. Let me know what you'd like to see for future merch. Grab you some and let me know what you ordered. Okay, video's done. You can, you can move on. I'm gonna go back inside.